Answer your phone. Hey, we're, uh, we're about to go live. Can you white balance it and just put the camera on something other than the sun? Amador, Argonaut, Calaveras, Bret Hart, Sonora, Somerville, an era has come to an end for the Motherload League. One final year, five of these teams will fight once again in hopes to achieve the coveted Motherload League title. After coming off their best season in over 12 years, the Somerville Bears stare at these hard, vigorous, back-breaking 11 weeks, wanting to do what only one team has done in seven years be the victors of the MLL. Somerville takes a turn onto Bears Boulevard to start their journey. The 2023-2024 Somerville Bears football season starts tonight in Gustine. Welcome to Gustine for the Edward Jones pregame show. I'm Levi Flores. He's Jeremy Hurtado. Uh, tonight, the Somerville Bears start their football season, and so do the Gustine Reds, just like the season started last year. But this time, Bears are on the road, and both of these teams looking at different offenses, uh, possibly different defensive. Uh, we haven't really had the chance to get information from the coaches, not because we didn't want to, but because they wanted to keep it somewhat of a secret. Uh, but the Gustine Reds come in with a new style of offense, having that triple option play in the Somerville Bears. Uh, we know that they're going to be running the ball a lot, but we don't exactly know what's going to happen. Yeah, looking at them in warm-ups and look, watching the JV game, it's, it's almost kind of like they've, they've taken Sonora's offense, tweaked a little bit. They're going to run out of a shotgun formation. Uh, it's almost like a shotgun double wing, wing T, however you want to call it. Uh, it. It's very similar, actually, to what we've seen Gustine run on the JV level. So, uh, yeah, both teams are going to want to run the football a lot. Use their big offensive lines up front and defensive lines. And uh, we'll see how that plays out here as we go along in the game. Can't wait to kick off football season, though. It's finally here. It is finally here. It is still blazing hot out here. So if in your home, if you are in your homes with the AC on, at least share some with us. Send it over love. I don't care. Send it over the comments, but give us some AC at some point. Uh, but last year, Somerville coming off their best season since the 2009-2010 season, in which they went 10 and 2, 5 and 0 in league. The last time that they won the Motherload League, and that was under Coach Ben Watson, who has since uh, not only retired from coaching as Sean, Sean Leveros. Uh, picked up the role, but he also retired from teaching. We want to congratulate Mr. Watson there. Uh, but last season, we looked at a 11 and 2 season, 4 and 1 in league, only losing to the Sonora Wildcats uh, under Coach Leveros, and they were undefeated until that point. Yeah, and it, they came out, went to the section championship game, lost on a heartbreaker, uh, deciding to go for two instead of trying to make the extra point and kick it overtime. I completely understand that personally as a coach. Some people I've talked to even this week are like, well, maybe they, yeah, well, that's the situation. If you make the extra point and get the two-point conversion win the sex championship, nobody has a question about it. If you miss it and don't win, then everybody says, ah, maybe that wasn't the play. Regardless, 
hey, great decision, great campaign last year, but that was last year. Oh, those guys are gone. We talked about it yesterday or the day before in our, in our league preview show. 95% of the offensive production graduated. Out the window. Okay, so now who's going to come in for Somerville and fill into those offensive roles at those skill positions? That's the big question mark. And if you do want to watch that show, it is still available on NorCal Sports TV. You can go back and watch that after the game tomorrow whenever you have time. It goes through the entire Motherlode League update. It is called Striking Gold, the Motherlode Landscape. And that is right there on NorCal Sports TV. But like you said, the loss of stars is big for Somerville. Braylon Leveros is gone. Kai Elkins, Dean Trimaloni. That was 95% of the offense. And defensively, the Hardy Party, Jaden Hardy, Logan Slater, George Henderson, also gone. So they need players to fill in those slots. And as of right now, the big question mark is quarterback. How are they going to change the scheme in order to fit a younger quarterback? And the name hasn't changed, but the player has, and that's Bryce Leveros putting into that quarterback slot as a sophomore. Hasn't played the quarterback position in high school. He was a wide receiver cornerback last year, but now into a new spot, having to facilitate the ball to his speed options. Um, but we're going to see how he is able to put it together today along with the rest of the team in their new style of offense. It's Somerville Bears football on NorCal Sports TV. Hello Bears fans, Black Oak Casino Resort is very proud to help bring you tonight's live streaming of the Somerville Bears football game. If you haven't been to Black Oak Casino Resort recently, now is the time to come by and check us out. Whether you enjoy the entertainment at Willow Creek Lounge, the 5 Star RV Park, the beautiful Black Oak Hotel and Conference Center, the Bowling Alley and Family Fun Center, all the games our casino offers, or the fine dining at Seven Sisters Restaurant. It's all there waiting for you. Thank you for watching and supporting Bears football. Enjoy the game. Lupo. It's a name synonymous with real estate in Tuolumne County and has been for more than 30 years. The latest member of the Lupo family to join the Tuolumne County real estate family is Leanne Lupo at Keller Williams Agency. Leanne is a Tuolumne County native and knows how special the place we call home is. A hard worker who truly cares about her clients. Leanne is a special talent. And Leanne is a Somerville High School graduate and huge bear supporter, so give her a call and see what she can do to help you. If you see her around town, please thank her for helping to make tonight's live stream possible. Somerville High graduate Robert Caldera started construction in Tuolumne County in 1984, was licensed in 1990, and has since been serving Tuolumne and Calaveras counties for over 25 years. He's now excited to have his son and Somerville High graduate Chris join the team to help and eventually take over the family business. So whether you need a new home, remodel, deck, window replacement, or other project, large or small, please consider this locally owned and family operated business, rcaldera.com. They're on Facebook and Instagram too, and go Bears! The Edward Jones pregame show on NorCal Sports TV for Somerville Bears football. He's Jeremy Hurtado. I'm the voice of choice, Levi Flores. And we talked about who's next for the Somerville Bears. And we have Bryce Leveros at that starting quarterback position. Tristan Barajas, who we saw last year on varsity as a backup to the one-two slots. Uh, Luke Larson as well, who is the JV quarterback last year. Why is he not quarterback this year? Well, the coaches saw something different in between their two options. But I don't doubt that we're going to see him at any point in the quarterback position. Yeah, and another guy that kind of was taking some reps to that quarter position, quarterback position during pregame warm-ups was number 44, Nicholas Rogers. So that, that could be a little little tweak maybe. Uh, we, we don't know, <laughs> you know, why he's taking those snaps in pregame warm-ups. Maybe it's just something to show. They, they showed a halfback option pass in pregame warm-up too. Something you really usually don't show if you're going to plan on using in the game, but who knows. It's, it's a new offensive system. It's a new offensive package brought over between Coach McDonald and Coach Leveros. They've installed it. They're ready to show it off tonight and, and, and see how things go. 
And one big thing that I mentioned in our Striking Gold show is the options that Somerville has. And I mentioned seven players that could possibly be slot, running back, anything of that sort. So seven options for Somerville to use speed. Uh, another thing about who's next for Somerville is the offensive-defensive line in not only just the entire line, but mainly the Wind Twins. Uh, Reese and Jordan Wynn have shown immaculate effort and proven themselves in the last three years being on varsity that they can take care of the line and do something for both sides. Absolutely. That's one place where Somerville shouldn't have to look for guys to replace is the offensive and defensive line. Going with the Edwards pregame show after this, we'll talk about Gustine. It's Bears football on NorCal Sports TV. Bears fans, the Bears quarterback club is excited to help bring you Bears football live streamed into your home or your device. Enjoy all the Bears football action on this TV quality broadcast. This is our way of saying thank you to the Bears community for all the support through the years. On behalf of the Bears quarterback club, thank you for watching and supporting Bears football. Enjoy the game. Levitt United Insurance Services offers quality insurance coverage, a high level of professional service, and a long-term relationship. They have several locations throughout California to serve your needs, including Elk Grove, Lodi, Napa, Roseville, Sonora, Walnut Creek, and Minden, Nevada. As independent agents, they'll research rates and coverage from top insurance companies to find the best insurance rates and insurance plans for you. They do the shopping and comparing, so you can save time and money. Out. Blow them out. Back to receive for the Reds, Andrew Season, Williams. Season, but if we look at the Somerville side, we have a new number in the kicking slot. It is number 23, Bryson Benitez. Uh, he is a sophomore, hasn't kicked a football uh, his entire life, but a few weeks ago, uh, he decided to join the team, decided to kick, and well, now he is here at the varsity level, hitting his first kick inside of a game. Yeah, and, and as a sophomore, you know, he, he's got some nerves going right now. He's kind of watched him kick a couple of extra points, and the first couple struggled, and then he got, okay, I, I can do this, and started hitting him through the upright. So it's going to be interesting to see the, the accuracy and depth on the kickoffs here. First one. Okay. Looks nice. Gets inside the 20. Received at the 18-yard line. Getting pushed left. Almost met at the 20 itself, but able to barrel through down the left sideline in front of the Gustine Reds side to about the 35. That's where the Reds will start. And uh, a nice kick return despite almost being let down at the 20. Yeah, nice job there by Andrew Williams taking the kick return. Brody Peters making the tackle there. First tackle of the season for the Bears. But if you're Gustine, that's great field position. You're starting from your own 38-yard line, first and 10 get a chance to unveil the offense. And Xander Leva Lev will be the guy for Gustine. Let's look at Gustine as well. Last season they were 4-7, and 2-5 and five in league. They finished 6th in the Southern League as they take their first play from scrimmage here, handing it off the middle, stiff-arming for a nice gain of 7. Uh, but last year, six in the Southern League, uh, 205 points scored for them, but then 296 points against, which is fairly even for a team that went four and seven. Yeah, a nice run there by Pal Palomino Jr. He was initially stopped, bounced off the tackle, though, kept his legs moving, drives for another three, four yards, brings up second and five. Nice job to start the season. Pause the play for Gustine. 
Uh, also, Gustine went to the playoffs last year. Uh, they took a 45-8 to loss versus Woodland Christian in the first round, but they did make it even with uh, a lower representation in the win-loss column. Yeah, absolutely. They had a positive season last year, and you see on the replay here again, another strong run by Palomino Jr., keeping his legs moving finally. Arian Schnavel able to come down and bring him down for Somerville, but not before he gets in the Bears' territory. Back up to the line at the 49. Snap to the handoff, takes the exchange, and immediately taken down by Riley Neves, the tight end linebacker mix in his senior year. Yeah, much better job there by the defense for Somerville that time. Same play, they just flipped it, going to the left side this time, and staying home was the Bears' lineman and making the play. Still picked up almost three yards, so that in this kind of offense, you're looking for three yards a pop. Three times four gets you a first down every time. So that's one of those things Somerville has to limit is those three-plus plays. Defensive line looks like they're having a tad bit of trouble as of right now, not sure where to line up as the Gustine Reds get another healthy gain of about four. Uh, but when we look at the Gustine Reds, too, it's almost as a rebuild season. I put it as a question mark because high school football, high school sports, you only get four years. So how often do you rebuild? A lot. But here you look at second-year head coach Colin Lane, 4-7 and seven in his debut. They're making changes, especially this triple option offense. Uh, but then next year they also get to be added to a uh, – not added to a new league, but change their league with an addition of Stone Ridge and Delta Charter. Yeah, and out goes Oristimba, out goes Ribbon Christian. So that's going to kind of help the Southern League as well. So far – it's been the Palomino show. Six plays, six runs for him. And just short on third down to make it fourth and short, but they are inside that Bears territory. So this is going to show how Colin Lane works, if he wants to go for this, or if he wants to just give it up to Somerville and hope that they could do it on the next few drives. Yeah, and I expect probably some kind of long count here. Don't, don't be surprised if we go, you know, long motion, something like that. Try to jump, get Somerville to jump here early. It's, pre, it's first game of the year. Everybody's excited. Everybody's pumped. They've been running the football pretty well. Go with that long count. Try and get them to jump. If not, hey, give it to Palomino again. You need a yard and a half. He's been the man so far on the drive. Palomino is lined up behind Leva. Takes the snap. Takes it himself. Met at the line, but I think he was able to launch forward for a Reds first down, but we haven't got the official call yet. Yeah, yeah and there they give him the first down. That time Leva just put himself right behind Palomino and said, hey, lead me the Block the guy. I'm going to fall forward, get the first down. You see it there on the replay. But in this type of offense, yeah, fourth and one, that's an automatic go for it. Unless you're, you know, out, outside the 50-yard line. Once you get in the opponent's territory, it's pretty much automatic green light. We're going for it. Uh, it it's, it's one of those things that you got to believe in this system that fourth and ones are, are the same as first downs. Two wideouts, one to each side. The snap, Leva hands it off and met immediately. Now the defense is picking it up. That's number 55, Wyatt Castonia, no stranger to Bears fans. Took him down for a loss of one. No, absolutely. You see Castonia there wasn't blocked. He's the read guy, and he just came down, made a good job. Probably a bad read that time by the quarterback. Okay, if he, if he pulls it, he might be able to get outside, but good job there by Castonia to stay in home, doing his assignment, making a nice play. That's a loss of about a half a yard, and that's what you want to do. You want to put them in behind the chains. Anything second and eight plus is what you want up here on the defensive side. Same formation, Leva. Takes it himself again, swallowed up, hit from behind by Riley Neves, and he does gain some yards here. Let's look at the keys to the game for Gastine offensively. Uh, the key that I have is new offense, trust it. You have to trust what you have put into play. If you go out there doubting it, then it's never going to work out. If you doubt the coach, if you doubt what you're doing, nothing is going to work for you. So you have to trust what you have put together so that it will work out. At any point, if you hesitate, that's when it's going to fall apart. So keep trusting it, even if you go down by a touchdown or two. Still plenty of time in the game. Keep doing it. Absolutely. That's one of those things we said. It's three yards. That's what you're looking to get every play. You, this kind of offense, you're going to go 0, 3, 1, 50. Okay? So you got to trust, like you said, believe in it, trust it, and let's see what happens here on third down. Leva puts the man in motion. First time looking at a pass down the left side. Wobbles out of his hands, and it is almost reeled in, but incomplete as it drops out at the last second. Intended target, Alex Gomez, the senior wide receiver, but great defense from the corner pushes it out and makes it fourth down. 
Yeah, you see here on the replay, the ball just kind of slipped out of his hand a little bit. It looked like he had a receiver open, under through it, and that allowed Barajas and others to get back and make the play. And now you're kind of in that uh, no-man zone here for this offense. It's fourth and six. That's not what you want if you're running this tri flex bone, triple option offense. Fourth and three, even four, you're, you're pretty safe. You feel good about, but fourth and six is probably going to have to go back in the air again. We'll see what Gustine elects to do here as they come out of the huddle. Get some whistles from the Gustine side. Timeout Reds, seven minutes left in the first quarter. Tie game 0 0. Support tonight's Bears football broadcast. If you find yourself needing a plumber, call us first. A simple faucet installation, a new energy-efficient water heater, or a new residential and commercial plumbing project, we will help with them all. With over 20 years of plumbing experience, look no further than Sindelar Plumbing for solutions to all your plumbing needs. Hello, Bear fans! Boyer Construction is proud to help bring you tonight's broadcast of Somerville Bears football. For over 30 years, they've proudly served our communities with an uncompromising commitment to quality, integrity, and client satisfaction. They are meticulous and still believe in the value of handshakes. And they ensure that you get the experience you deserve. Thank you for watching and supporting Bears football. Enjoy the game. Chicken Ranch Casino is a proud sponsor of the Somerville Bears Quarterback Club, and they support Somerville High student-athletes. Leva on fourth and six, looking to convert that first down to continue their drive. Not going to do so. Bears take over on the turnover on downs. Yeah, that time they just went Palomino up the right side again. Uh, nice play there by the Bears defense to hold them short. One positive, if you're looking for Augustine, yes, they turned the ball over there on downs, but they ran off five minutes off the clock, so controlled the ball. One of the, Another positive things you want to do in this kind of offense is control the football. You want to make sure that you're on offense, you're running your plays, you're running at that defense that's wearing them down. First look at the new Somerville Bears offense. Leveros takes the snap, pitches out right side, multiple blockers. Nick Rogers is the leading blocker to set open Tristan Barajas, who passes the 50-yard line into Reds territory. And Somerville already looking strong with a 15-yard gain. Yeah, at that time they just go in motion, run that toss sweep, power, and nobody out there to contain for Gustine, and Bears go quick on the line again. Tristan Barajas, major shiftiness, major speed. This time they go with the second option, Austin Hike. The two backups to the quarterback running back options last year, and he's able to gain eight. Yep, and again, that's the guy we talked about too. We talked about Barajas, Hike, as guys that can fly. Okay, and here we see it. They get him out on the outside. Good job of running that toss sweep. Getting them outside, use the speed, use the legs. We kind of alluded to that. Could be the scenario that we... Could see Somerville doing, and now don't be shocked if they come some kind of power up the middle. They go outside, outside, now come up the middle. Leveros takes it again, hands it off to Rogers. Ball is loose, and Leveros is able to jump back on it. They'll lose a couple of yards, but now it'll be third and five. Yeah, and again, they tried to go right up the middle with that power play, kind of like I was thinking. Uh, just widening the defense out, running the outside, outside. Unfortunately, a little miscommunication on the handoff there cost the Bears possibly a big play. The deposit got denied, and here is Leveros again with Rodgers to his right. Man in motion from left to right is Barajas. He pitches again like the first play from scrimmage, and a huge tackle, the takedown by Isaiah Prado. Yeah, that time, nice job by Gustine. They, they got outside. They corralled things. You see seven there. He, he gets washed out, but he makes some cut up field, and then that's where the cool. defenders come back and clean it up. And it was only a gain of about a yard and a half, maybe two. Brings up a fourth and short for Somerville. And that's where some shiftiness comes into play and actually helps the defense. You may be able to cut around one defender, but that can put you in a bad position for other defenders being close by. So they have to watch out for that. Here's Barajas again, going to stop his motion behind Leveros and cut back to his left side slot. Yeah, that's a play like I talked about on the other side. They tried to draw him off sides there, didn't get it to go. And now Somerville's going to call a timeout. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Still remains 0-0.
And construction brings a can-do attitude to every aspect of a construction project, making dreams a reality for its customers. The Roberson team is made up of professionals who know how to make the construction process a positive experience. Roberson Construction focuses on quality and integrity to maximize results and minimize stress. Whatever your construction needs, a remodel, new home, commercial project, consider Roberson Construction. You can find us locally and on Facebook or Instagram. We look forward to listening to you. Since 1968, Seuss Insurance has been a leader in providing health, dental, vision, Medicare supplements, and life insurance to thousands of individuals and small businesses throughout California. Who wouldn't want the best insurance agent Yvonne has ever had? Seuss Insurance Services is comprised of a team of insurance professionals ready to assist you with whatever insurance plan you may need, or perhaps you already have a medical insurance plan. However, Leveros in the gun, handoff once more. It's Barajas pushing the line, first down Somerville. Yeah, that time just a wing power by Barajas. Good job of just getting behind his blockers, and then once he got contact, driving his feet. Keep moving here, as you see on the replay. Good job of just getting up in there and then moving his feet, keep going forward, fall forward for the first down. Bears have it inside the 35-yard line, first and 10. The key I have for the Somerville offense is play the game you're told. These coaches are very specific on what they want you to do. And uh, this is the different style of offense where they're designing a play and telling the quarterback what to do, who to hand it off to, who to throw it to. So play the game you're told and don't waver from it, and you'll be just fine. Absolutely. I mean, this is a kind of a complicated offense. It's, it's going to be ever evolving as the season goes on. As you see this time, they show that wing motion and said they just run that little die play up the middle to Rodgers, and he is able to pick up a yard before he's brought down. But the key there is that was a nice play by Gustine uh, to stay disciplined. They didn't fall for the fly, that motion. They said, okay, oh, there's the running back. We're going to get him. So in the third quarter, will that be the same situation as discipline? We'll see. And that's the key I have for the Gustine defense is don't get caught watching. Make sure you know who guys, which guys you have and that you're going to take him down. Here's Barajas down to the 20, and a flag flies for the first time in the season. Yeah, and that one might be going against Somerville there on the block. We'll see. It looked like one of the Bears outside, maybe Hike, got a little face mask or hold there. It, it is against Somerville. So... A little like over-aggressiveness by Hike out there on the outside. But nice job of finishing the run by Barajas. He came out here to prove something here his first game on his senior year. and So far, he's had a pretty decent drive. Last year when these two teams met at Thorstead Field in Tuolumne, it was a 42-9 win for Somerville. They were able to put up nine drives throughout the game, had 310 total yards, only six passes out of 28 plays, only had time of possession for 14 minutes, uh, and only one of the five touchdowns that they scored in the game is from a current player, and that was Austin Hike, who had a 50-yard rushing touchdown. And here uh, it's Barajas again down the right side, gets some yards, and a few reds get piled onto off the sideline. Yeah, and again, Barajas just running hard. Got an injured red on the sideline there, but Barajas comes around the outside, gets forward, and then just drives his legs. Getting rolled up there was Torres by Gustine, and, and that's going to be one of the keys here is, is we didn't talk about it before the game, but Somerville suits up 36 players. Okay, They have guys that play offense, and then they have guys that play defense. Some obviously intermingle. Gustine, 21 guys. they got to go both ways, so we'll see how that plays out as the game goes on. Leveros hands it to Nicholas Rogers. He gets passed into the 20, red zone 10, trying to barrel forward inside the five he goes, and the Somerville Bears are in striking position. Yeah, that was actually Aaron Schnabel in that time at the B-back position. But great job there by number 24 to just get in there and run hard down the right sideline. And that is a completely new option that we haven't seen before. He was hurt for most of the season last year. And on our roster sheet, only uh, defense is what his position is marked as, as a defensive end. But yeah. now that just yeah, adds. how coaches do things sometimes. Absolutely. And that just adds one extra element to the offense of the Bears that nobody really saw coming. Here's Hike on the move from right to left. Leveros going to take it, trying to follow blockers. Chase from behind. Inside the five, he goes, but stopped shy about two yards of the end zone. Yeah, I was, I was curious how long it was going to take for Leveros to get involved here. We've seen those those jet toss or rocket toss sweeps, however you want to call them. This time they run that same action. And he just says, I'm going to keep it, follow the blockers. Now i got three, four guys out there in front of me. 
put my head down, be an athlete, and get down to the two-yard line. Brings up third and goal for the Somerville. And this is something that every single team practices from two yards out. It's basically like an extra point or two-point conversion. So we'll see how many attempts it takes for them to find the red. Here is Arian Schnabel up the middle, end zone, touchdown, Somerville. Yeah, Schnabel just doing a good job of getting off that left side. Good job by the offensive line. They created a nice hole there for him to cut through. As you see here on the replay, Salea and the company up front there just getting out, making a hole. I don't even know if he was touched as he went into the end zone. And now we talked about it earlier, the first attempt for Bryson Benitez. And last year we had Dean Trimaloni. He had only missed a few attempts on the season. He was also a wide receiver, so he was going from running massive routes to then kicking the ball. But here uh, listed only as a kicker, but we know Somerville likes to play both sides of the ball as well. Here it is through the uprights, and the Somerville Bears lead 7-0 for the first game. Bears football season. Area Foundation remains focused on its mission of strengthening its communities. It does that through three functions, assisting donors, awarding grants, and leading the community. The vision of the Sonora Area Foundation is that it will be the benchmark for exemplary practices in the philanthropy field. You can go to sonoraarea.org to learn more. Sonora Area Foundation, for good, forever. Visit Tuolumne County is proud to bring you tonight's broadcast of Somerville Bears football. As the official tourism bureau of Tuolumne County, California, their mission is to enhance economic growth by increasing tourism to Tuolumne County. VTC invites visitors to experience iconic Yosemite explorations, authentic California gold country discoveries, and unforgettable High Sierra outdoor adventures. You can enjoy endless outdoor recreation, state and local parks, sightseeing, stargazing, history, shopping, wine and cider tastings, relaxation, and more. Arian Schnabel with touchdown number one of the season for the Somerville Bears. I'm Levi Flores. He's Jeremy Hurtado, and the Gustine Reds will get the ball back with the kick from Benitez. We'll see if the Gustine Reds have an answer to the Bears' touchdown. This one low and down the middle. Puts it up as an option for the Bears and falling on it. A smart play by the Gustine Red special teams at the 34-yard line. They'll take over. Yeah, nice little squib kick there. Let's see uh, what Gustine can do to answer. They had a nice drive there in the first five minutes of the first quarter. Unfortunately for them, turned the ball over on downs at the 30-yard line. Somerville took down in five minutes, no time at all, goes down scores their first touchdown of the season. So far, so good for the Somerville offense. And for the Somerville defense as they now retake the field, my key of the game for them since we didn't have a chance to push it out in that first drive is stay on your target and uh, Gustine's new offense with multi-options. Uh, don't go to somebody else. Don't get caught watching. It's the same as the Gustine side. Just play exactly what you are supposed to do. And here uh, Leva kept it again and met in the back by Matthew Hike who took him down for a loss. Yeah, Leva to actually pitch it out there. Hike comes up, does his responsibility. He's got pitch guy. Did a good job of just, hey, break down, make How the tackle. Picks up loss of four on the play. So putting Gustine in that negative position on second down. Two minutes and counting for the first. Here's Leva trying to catch the defense off sides. Man in motion, drops back to pass. Hit from behind, ball jarred loose. They're going to count it as a fumble, and the Somerville Bears take over inside the 30. There's that guy, Bryce Rathmill, coming off his defensive end position. See him here. Nobody blocks him. Blindsides the quarterback. Sack strip, fumble. Somerville recovers it. Looks like it might have been Trenton Stone that recovered it. I'm not sure. Regardless, Somerville, big, big takeaway. Take put in the session on the 20. Six-yard line of the Reds. Completely blindsided. Bryce Rathmill taking over that hardy party. And he's the new face of the Somerville defense. They were super excited to get him from the junior varsity level and showing off in the second drive of the season. And now the offense back with it. Leveros pitching out. Colton Cash, his first carry on varsity, getting five, almost ten. Nine-yard gain for Colton Cash on carry number one. Yeah, Cash, another guy that we talked about. He could fly. He's a baseball player as well. Uh, know him a little bit. And Somerville, we talked about speed, speed, speed. Okay, Barajas, Hike, Cash, guys that can just get on the outside and make things happen. So far, exactly kind of how we drew things up if you're Somerville. Get the guys involved, spread the ball around, 
and make positive things happen. Barajas hike in play. They're both on the right side of the line as Leveros looking over, but it looks like we have a timeout by the Reds first, trying to avoid that 14-0 deficit. Tree Service is here tonight to bring you Bears football. They specialize in comprehensive tree maintenance and removal. The skilled arborists and staff at Nate's Tree Service have over 30 years experience serving residential and commercial clients in Amador, Calaveras, Tuolumne, and Mariposa counties. They bring their unique understanding of the trees of the western slope of the Sierra to a wide range of tasks related to tree health, maintenance, and removal. Sierra Pacific is proud to support Somerville Bears football. At Sierra Pacific Industries, we understand our greatest strength is the people who choose to build a career with us. We offer many opportunities for personal and professional growth from entry level to skilled trades, from truck drivers to sales managers, from foresters to engineers. Become one of our valued team members as part of a growing third generation family owned forest products company. Second and one in the red zone. Leveros looking end zone. He throws shy, but it's caught inside the five. That is Brody Peters, the senior wide receiver, reeling it in, avoiding the incomplete pass, and now in striking distance once more from the three. Yeah, and you look here. Good job of rolling out by Leveros, clearing his shoulders, which got to get done. It makes a nice, accurate throw to Peters. Good job there. Nice little boot pass for Somerville and sets him up first and goal. Shout out to the Peters family watching from home as well. Thanks for supporting NorCal Sports TV and the Somerville Bears. But here back at the three, Leveros in the gun. Three receivers to his left. Colton Cash back in the backfield. He takes the handoff. He gets the end zone. Touchdown, Somerville. Yep, that's that goes off that same toss play that they've been running. That time he goes a short little stutter motion. Counter back to the, in, out to the right side. All the defense flows with the motion and an easy touchdown. Walk in for Colton Cash. Good to see that Somerville cruising here early. 13 total yards for Colton Cash, but include a touchdown with that. And Benitez will add an extra point to make it 14-0. You're watching Bears football on NorCal Sports TV. Burner, financial advisor at Thrivent, is proud to help bring tonight's Bears football game live to your home. As a Somerville High alum and a member of the Bears quarterback club, Scott is instrumental in supporting Somerville High School and Bears football in many ways. The next time you see Scott, be sure to say hello and thank him and Thrivent for supporting the Bears football family. That's Scott Burner, serving you in retirement and insurance. Zindalar Tree Service is a local family owned and operated business specializing in meeting fire clearance requirements, hazardous tree removal and emergency jobs. With over 20 years experience, our employees are safe, knowledgeable and professional. Voted 2021's best of 209 by 209 Multimedia, we're happy to provide our customers with quality work at affordable rates. Proud to offer discounts to veterans? Call today to schedule your free estimate. 209-559-0124. Somerville Bears 14, Gustin 0 in the first quarter. 37 seconds left to play in the first. And the team coming together nicely in their first time in an actual play situation. They had uh, an opportunity to scrimmage Hilmar last week. And as far as I'm concerned, that went pretty well. But here's Benitez uh, punting it up and down. And this one's recovered by the Somerville Bears. Hunter Anderson recovers the fumbled kick return. And it's Bears football inside red territory. Yeah, that's, this is one of these first game stuff. You get that pop-up kick. Nobody knows. Good job there by the kicker of just finding that empty void. Ball hits the ground. You never know what's going to happen. And then Somerville wisely jumps on it by Anderson senior out there on special teams gets the ball back for Somerville and uh, th this could get ugly quick here if they can put on another score on the board uh, we have a couple of shout outs here a uh, shout out to the hills that just covered the sun up that is one big shout out that we'd like to give to uh, also my parents watching from Alabama it is their 28th wedding anniversary tomorrow my brother down in Mexico happy birthday to him uh, in two days on Sunday thanks for watching Somerville Bears football and we love you from the Gustine stands anybody else in the family you want to say hi to I mean you know I mean my sister's whole. in Reno there but she is. doesn't like football okay, so well, you know. So pick up a four there by Somerville. 
Again, that's just power run, power run. We've seen the one completed pass attempt. To Brody and Peters. I kind of think that's what they're going to do is just, hey, we're going to come at you. If you can stop us, then so be it. And that was what it was like last year, too, with the Somerville team. They were a heavy run, but occasionally throw that ball. And when they did, very successful. But here's Nick Rogers again on the run game. Third and short as the first quarter comes to a close. Bears will return on the opposite side of the field with a 14-0 lead after this. Burner, financial advisor at Thrivent, is proud to help. Still behind a little bit. Auto Septic Service Incorporated, full service septic installation, maintenance, and repair. With over 25 years experience serving the needs of Tuolumne, Calaveras, and Mono Counties, Sean Dar and the El Dorado Septic Team are your trusted name in local quality septic services. Go to eldoradoseptic.com. That's eldoradoseptic.com. Service done right. At Caldwell Insurance, our local team is dedicated to providing you with quality personal and commercial insurance programs. Whether it's for your home, autos, farm, or business, our professional team of agents can find the best protection at a competitive price. It's our family-owned and operated agency that will provide you and your loved ones protection under our roof. Give us a call at 209-532-5102 or visit our website at caldwell-insurance.com. Bears football looking good to start the season, coming off that close to undefeated season, now looking to replicate that. 14-0 in the first quarter against the Gustine Reds in Gustine. And Bryce Leveros, uh, the new starting quarterback, looking good. He's only thrown one pass, but uh, just coming together, handing off-wise, there was only one fumble. It was recovered by him. So they're doing everything right, making sure that even if there is a mistake, that they are able to recover from that. Yeah, we had a little day there because the clock didn't reset, but now Somerville back to the ground. Austin Hike, the stiff arm off the left side, gets away from the primary defense, still on his feet before being swallowed up by a pack of red. Yeah, right now it's, it's kind of danger zone for Gustine. Somerville's moving the ball at will, kind of imposing their will, and Hike, Barajas, uh, Cash, they're kind of doing what they want to do is just run the ball to outside, outside, and then you give it up to ball middle to Rogers and Snovel. So got to find a way to take away something and make Somerville make some adjustments. Leveros with Rogers to his right and some movement. I think Gustine tried to sneak 12 guys on the field. No, maybe the off offsides. They got a substitute coming in. That's what I thought maybe. But so, hey, try something, right? Get a little head start if you have to. First and five. I don't think they're going to waver since they're such a young team. They're going to run that same play. But you never know with some of these football coaches. It is Tristan Barajas back on the move and flung down to the ground after the gain of a first down. So checking out some scores around the mother load. Douglas, 28 to nothing over Argonaut oh. in the second quarter. As we see that nice, strong run by Barajas. Also, Calaveras is down 22 to nothing, the Stone Ridge Christian. Uh, and then the last report we got is Oakdale 7, Sonora 6 over at the Corral. So interesting things going down in the Motherload League tonight. And if you want to hear more about those matchups, you can go later on, watch Striking Gold, the Motherload Landscape on NorCal Sports TV. Here is Austin Hike down the side behind Rogers, pushed in the back inside the five. Once more, the Somerville Bears looking to go up three touchdowns within just 13 minutes. Yeah, and Hike again did a good job of just getting behind those blockers here. You see good job of getting out there by Rogers and company and just clearing a path and nobody out there to keep contain four Gustine. Matthew Hike is going to go deep down the side, be the one wide out for Somerville as Leveros hands it to Nick Rogers, trying to share the love. They do just that. Touchdown, Somerville. Yeah, that's a third touchdown, third time the, the Bears has gone untouched in the end zone. So that tells me as a coach or as a pro person watching the game. O-line must have been doing something right. We get a chance to check it out here. This time it's the left side of the O-line. They just drive down. Two guys, Hunter Anderson getting a nice block there from his tight end position. Washing everything down and it's an easy walk-in touchdown for Nicholas It's a Rogers. fake. 
taking it left side. Three reds in front, trying to get past. Almost pushed there, but didn't press the ball out far enough to beat the pylon. Just shy on the two-point conversion, Luke Larson. Not going to get there. 20 to 0 will continue to be our score. 13 minutes, 13 seconds into play. Bears fans, Nate Saw and Moore is pleased to support tonight's Bears football broadcast. They're your go-to retailer when you need a steel project to do the job at home or at work. Visit their store where friendly, knowledgeable staff will assist you in finding the right steel for the job. Whether it's a chainsaw, blower, trimmer, pressure washer, or anything in between. Nate's Saw and Mower on Longeway Road in Sonora. 20 to nothing, Somerville Bears lead the Gustine Reds in Gustine. I'm Levi Flores, he's Jeremy Hurtado. Thanks for joining us on NorCal Sports TV. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like the video, comment if you can. Tell us where you are watching from as well, and we'll hope to shout you out. Not another update over from the Corral. Sonora up 12 to 7. Missed two extra points, but putting touchdowns on the board are the Wildcats as they go down to the Corral and try and upset the Oakdale Mustangs. So Motherload League getting action all over the place. And thanks for the updates from our people out there. Here's Benitez dropping this one to the 20. Fumbled again for the second time in a row. Able to pick it back up, but met right there and swallow it to the ground. A long way for the Gustine Reds to get to the end zone, but this could be the drive starting off the second quarter. Yeah, that time it was just a matter of Looking down and trying to take a peek of where the, the defenders were coming from, didn't watch it into his hands, went right through his hands. Luckily for him, it can bounce right back up to him because that could have been disaster. Now, like you said, Gustine's got to get something positive here. Don't, maybe not a score, but just can't give the ball back to Somerville real quick. Got to get down here, flip field position, and give their defensive coaching staff a chance to kind of reset things as they go into the second quarter. And now if they take the rest of the second quarter just to score a touchdown, that is going to be just fine with me and I'm sure just fine with Somerville. But uh, eventually they're going to have to speed up their gameplay a little bit. But right now, just get your feet under you. Yeah, nice powerful run there by Palomino. Again, he's been the workhorse so far. He was the guy on the first drive that had five of the six carries. This time, Larson comes up from that backside linebacker position, makes a good stick and drives him down to the ground, but not before he picks up eight. I asked Coach Colin Lane of the Gustine Reds, what does he expect from game one and what is the focus? He says that I expect all 21 players to be giving their best effort on the field. Their main focus right now is to make sure that they are responding to adversity in a positive way and playing with maximum effort for all four quarters. Uh, they can fix mental... Uh, mental and assignment mistakes as long as they play with great effort. And with this new offense, it is expected to face some adversity, and he wants to see all players work through it together. Yeah, and you talked about sticking with it. That time, it looked like that was almost kind of a, an option look, and he wanted to pitch it, and then, oh, nope, I better take it. Spins, keeps his legs moving, gets the first down. Nice job there by Xander of just – put his head down and going and getting the first down, say, hey, we need the first down. We got to go get this. I'm going to put it on myself to go get it. And it, it brings up a first down at about the 41-yard line. Had to have that for Gustine. And when we talked about the stats from last year's game where Somerville had nine drives, 310 total yards, and five touchdowns in that game, uh, I also asked Coach Lane, what did he learn from last year's game that will help him now? And, of course, we saw Somerville change and Gustine change, but you can still learn a little bit about coaching styles and what the um, relative motion is of what they want to do. And he said that one thing that they learned is that they need to play them with maximum effort for the entirety of the game. Last year they came out, fell flat, and dug a hole early, but he's hoping that the players will give great effort for the four quarters no matter what the score is. And so far they're still continuing to move, but the Somerville offense is the one thing standing in their way. Yes, yeah, Earl's had the ball three times, scored three times, and now one of, the, one of those obviously on the defensive turnover that set it up by Bryce Le or <laughs> Bryce Rathmel, rather. And then the sh kickoff fumble. So the offense hasn't been the problem as far as Gustine goes. It's been turnovers. Leva once more with the fake handoff, takes it himself to follow the man up the gut. It adds a few, but it's still shy of a first. Third 
And they're going to move the chains after all and make it first down. Gustin taking three minutes off of the clock in the second quarter during this drive. From the Somerville 49, Leva under center. Two wideouts, one to each side with a man in the slot. Comes over in motion. Hands it up the gut. Bullies the defense for a large gain of 15 yards. Gusty and Reds looking promising. Yeah, nice run there by Sebastian Vargas that time out of the fullback position. Just a quick hitter. Made the guy miss out with Schnabel, and then he was off to the races, finally brought down in the backfield by the defensive backs. But if you're Gustine, this is what you want to see. You see some, some signs of life. I said the two turnovers. One, not really your fault. Blindside hit, quarterback gets just drilled to lose the ball. Then you give up a touchdown, you turn the ball right back over on the on the kickoff. I mean, that's a 14-point swing. Oh, I actually ended up missed extra point, so 13-point swing. 20 to nothing, just over eight minutes to play in the first half. Robertson CPA's passion is helping people achieve business success and financial independence. While we certainly provide traditional accounting services such as tax preparation, payroll, and bookkeeping, we also offer a variety of advisory services to help with business planning, social security decisions, income and asset growth, tax efficiency, and much more. Benton Roberson CPAs is here to help our clients achieve their goals through a generational relationship and wealth building. We hope to see you soon. Oh, uh. Somerville 20, Gustine 0, but the Gustine Reds are on the move after that last play from Sebastian Vargas. It sets up the Gustine Reds in the attacking third. No, absolutely, and this is this is the answer you had to have here, Gustine. Okay, there's still 8 minutes and 11 seconds left in the second quarter. You're down 20 to nothing. Coach talked about, hey, we're going to see inversity. How are we going to step, you know, come back from that? What are we going to do? This is a good answer here, but you got to get points now. Okay, you got to get it in the end zone if you're Gustine to try and slow down the momentum of the Sunroll Bears. Vargas is in the backfield, and as a sophomore, getting a carry like that will definitely show something for the coaches. Trust you a little bit more in this one. Oh, my goodness. Taken down, lost the ball, but they blow it dead after the initial hit. Leva a little shaken up. We'll have to go back out there for a deep play of second and 15. Yeah, and you see on the replay here, good job there by Luke Larson making the play, and then it's coming down kind of awkwardly was Leva. And I, I mean, they called him down, so otherwise Larson was there to pick it up, and he was gone. So that might be a break for Gustine. Coming up to the line rather quickly after a bulldozing play of defense from Somerville. Hand off again down the middle and only six yards gained back. And now it's third and ten. Yeah, that, that time it was number five once again. Vargas from that fullback Vargas. position. Kind of lost momentum as he ran into his own guy. If he would have taken another step to the right, he might have had a, a more of an angle to take off. But nonetheless, picked up positive yards. Brings up third and we'll call it ten as it looks like they marked it right back at the original line of scrimmage. Big play here. you got to pick up at least half if you're Gustine. And I think the Gustine Reds have just got their new guy, a sophomore, Sebastian Vargas, on two plays, doing exactly what Coach wants to see. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he stays out there, not only for the rest of the game, but throughout the entire season. Leva. Snap, move left side, takes it himself again, cuts the corner, five-yard gain, almost to 10 and just shy of the first down marker, but it is going to be fourth and short for the Gustine Reds at the 25. Yeah, absolutely. Nice run there by Leva. Leva had over 800 total yards last year, and this shows why. You can see when he gets out in the out, outside, he's shifty, got some moves, got some speed, picked up nine. It brings up fourth and one, and this is, this is where you want to be if you're one of these triple option offense. Every call in the playbook here is available to you. Uh, wouldn't be shocked though to see just turn and hand it off to Vargas. But he came out, of course, as I say that, and then Palomino comes back in. So we might see Palomino the big power back this time. Tight offense on fourth and one. Leva staring down the defense. I believe he takes it himself, and the entire 11 player offense of Gustine moves past that marker, so it's first down Gustine in the high red zone. No, absolutely, and that, that's just a quarterback keep. You see 
fullback wings come inside get some blocking and great job of just blowing the defensive line back by the gustine offensive line picking up five and like you said it's marked right at the 20 yard line five and a half minutes left gustine uh, if they continue on this path will score before the end of the half and make sure to stay around for a minute or two to hear the el dorado septic halftime report as Gustine, first and 10 at the 20, handoff, middle, five yards, six yards, and tackled down by Arian Schnabel. Yeah, and right now it's just a one, two, three punch by Gustine. It's, hey, Palomino, Palomino, we saw the beginning of the drive. It was Vargas just running power football right at Somerville. And then when they when that kind of slows down, they'll pull it, and, and Leva takes it outside, and he uses his legs and speed. And this is what this offense is designed to do is you're going to just body blow, body blow, body blow, and then you're looking for that big, you know, pop play to go outside out with one of the wings of the quarterback or even a play action pass. Second and five, Leva up the gut, tackle down, Riley Neves back on the defense. Yeah, and I think that might just be an automatic call there because there wasn't, I don't think there was anybody lined up over the center. There wasn't. It's a center snaps the ball. He gets three yards of just run at a linebacker. So nice job there by the quarterback. Hey, he sees it and goes, hey, there's nobody here. Just going to take the ball, take it for five yards, pick up first and goal at the nine-yard line. I mean, it's one of those things that's kind of an automatic call that you see it and you just do it. So right now, Gustine has put some offensive together here on this drive, and, and this is just what the doctor ordered if you're a Reds fan. Gustine looking at two wideouts, but the rest of them are tight at the nine. Leva gives it off again, just keeps pounding the middle, and it continues to work for the Gustine Reds. Yeah, that time Riley Neves was able to get up and just kind of grab onto Palomino and go for a ride for a couple yards before he probably finally brought him down, but not till he got down to the five-yard line. So brings up second and goal from the five for the Reds. Somerville making sure that they line up the entire defensive line so that they don't make another mistake like we saw a moment ago. They do the same thing anyway, and it works out for them too. The Gustine Reds at the one. And again, that time it, it, they were in that four-man defensive line. Nobody is over the center, and so quarterback just takes it. You can see their split between the center just gets up on that linebacker and buries them, and it, it's, it's really easy. I mean, there's nobody there. You just take the snap, go forward until somebody touches you. You picked up four, maybe five yards. So that's that's got to be an adjustment that Somerville's going to see from the booth and be like, okay, we got to change something here, change an alignment at some point. Leva staring in the face of a touchdown, pushed inside, touchdown, Gustine. Yeah, and that time they did. They had somebody covered up. They had all three of the inside guys covered up. But when you're a yard away, he just wiggled and found a crack, got into the end zone, and puts the first points on the board for Gustine. Jason Leader, the senior, Looking at the extra point, last year it wasn't until the fourth quarter that the Gustine Reds were able to put the ball in the end zone. So it's looking promising for them here. It's here, leader with the bad snap, has to do something and oh, swallow it up. And that will do it for this drive of Gustine. Just under three minutes left to play in the second quarter. Somerville leads 20 to six. Ranch Casino is a proud sponsor of the Somerville Bears Quarterback Club and they support Somerville High student athletes. By working together, Chicken Ranch Casino believes we can all help elevate each and every student athlete's game, both on the field and in the classroom. 
Lupo. It's a name synonymous with real estate in Tuolumne County and has been for more than 30 years. The latest member of the Lupo family to join the Tuolumne County real estate family is Leanne Lupo at Keller Williams Agency. Leanne is a Tuolumne County native and knows how special the place we call home is. A hard worker who truly cares about her clients. Leanne is a special talent. And Leanne is a Somerville High School graduate and huge bear supporter, so give her a call and see what she can do to help you. If you see her around town, please thank her for helping to make tonight's live stream possible. Somerville has one more chance to score before the half. We'll see what they can do as this one's caught by Matthew Hike and puts him in a good position at the 35-yard line. Yeah, that time just a line drive kick. Hike able to catch it and fall on the ground. Good job there of just making the play, being an athlete up there at one of those up-back positions. And like you said, Somerville takes over 246. Great field position. Wouldn't be shocked to see them come down. They, they believe they got two timeouts left, so plenty of time to come out and um, put some more points on the board before halftime. Their drives have taken a little while besides the one uh, that was caused a fumble by Bryce Rathmill, so we'll see how fast they can get down as Rodgers does get taken down after a gain of three. And both sides, when they're on offense, the quarterback's running over, getting the play from Coach, which could burn him out a little bit. Yeah, personally, never been a big fan of that. I'd, I'd rather have wristbands come some of the hand signals, but uh, t each coach believes in their own way of kind of getting the play into the quarterback. Some teams run another player on and give it to them. So. Leveros, quick pass right side, tip out of the hands of Austin Hike. That is the first incomplete pass that we'll see from Little Bryce Leveros. Yeah, and that time he grabs the snap, and it's supposed to be a quick pass. He kind of sidearms a little bit and just leads the receiver too much. So he's uh, one of two so far. One, one down the sideline, not too bad. Did a good job of turning his shoulders. That one uh, might have rushed a little bit, had more time, I think, than he thought he was going to. I, I know it's supposed to be a quick bubble screen, but still, catch, turn, throw. And like my dad would always say, if it's in the hands, you should have caught it. And, well, I mean, who are you going to blame? Doesn't matter. On to the next play. <laughs> We got some movement on the line. They throw the flag Gustine side, so some free yards coming to Somerville. Yeah, that time. Gervickham for Gustine, the nose guard, just saw the motion, tried to time the count. Somerville went long count and got him the jump. That was a big play there because it was going to be third and nine-ish. Instead, brings up a third and five with 2.14 left to go here in the second quarter. Rogers is on the left side of Leveros. I believe that's Brody Peters deep out right side. Leveros carries behind Hike, and he's in some trouble as he barreled behind Jordan Wynn, and he's not going to get there. Oh, and a flag flies late as Leveros' helmet came thrown off, and it doesn't look like Jeremy's happy, but we'll see it closer. No, it's what it is is great job. You made a play, and then you got up, and you bumped him. And then started talking trash, and it's going to cost you. you it was going to be a fourth and one. Instead, you couldn't keep your composure, and you're going to get called for the personal foul. Personal foul. Automatic first down. You keep the drive alive instead of getting the ball back and having a chance to go put more points on. It's one of those things that coaches get to drive them crazy. And, and it's just a bad decision by a junior defensive lineman there. Coachable moment here tomorrow or Monday when they watch film. But it's going to be one of those things that he's going to wish he never did again, I'm sure. Two minutes and counting, 20 Somerville, 6 Gustine. And now in now, the ball in Red's territory after the personal foul. One thing we didn't talk about, you said it, but we didn't really click, is that Leveros' helmet came off during the play. It wasn't for the penalty, so Leveros has to come out for a play. So another quarterback's going to come in. And uh, we'll see who that is. I mean, it looks it has to be Luke Larson, in my opinion. But Arian Schnabel is coming into play. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's going to happen here. We'll, we'll kind of wait and see. I wouldn't be shocked if, if it was actually Nicholas Rogers that lines up at the quarterback position. It is Schnabel. It is going to be back okay. there with Rogers. And do we see a passing play? Do we shock the defense of Gustine? I and mean, we're not even going to see it. Gustine is just killing themselves here on defense again. That's the third penalty. Oh, that one's against Somerville. Ooh. I thought they got Gustine again. 
Instead, it's a false start penalty against Somerville. And then the disappointing part is that doesn't count as a play, so Leveros still has to sit on the sideline. And that's what Coach Leveros is trying to decide. Hey, well, then that's a penalty, but no, it doesn't count as a play. He's going to – looks like he's going to take a timeout. Timeout bears. United Insurance Services offers quality insurance coverage, a high level of professional service, and a long-term relationship. They have several locations throughout California to serve your needs, including Elk Grove, Lodi, Napa, Roseville, Sonora, Walnut Creek, and Minden, Nevada. As independent agents, they'll research rates and coverage from top insurance companies to find the best insurance rates and insurance plans for you. They do Schnabelak quarterback Rogers as the back on his left side. Uh, Leveros out due to that helmet coming off during the play. So we'll see what Coach Leveros has drawn up for us. 90 seconds left in the first half. Somerville 20, Gustine 6. Here's Schnabel with Hike going from right to left. Schnabel Not takes it himself. Paper. Has a man in front to block for him as he swallowed up from behind. And he will get a decent amount of yards to get him back past the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically like a wildcat formation here. Schnabel takes a snap, power left. Everybody gets out in front. Again, good job of Somerville. Hike out there blocking on the corner as well as Rogers. And back comes Leveros now to lead the offense. And also coming in is number 45, Trenton Miller. He will line up as the left side slot. No, they're going to push him to a wide out. So four outs for Somerville as Leveros looks to throw. Down the left side, has him open, just slightly overthrown to Tristan Barajas, and it slipped out at the last second. Beautifully drawn play. First time we've seen that from the offensive side, and unfortunately, Somerville just couldn't put it down into the hands of Barajas. Yeah, and I think that was a pretty decent pass. I think Barajas just didn't see it. It kind of almost goes right over his head. Kind of maybe a little bit behind him, but still, it was a decent pass. I think that was one that uh, if you ask Barajas after he watches the film, says, yeah, I, I might, maybe I should have caught that one. Because if he catches it, he's going to the side, end of the end zone. There was nobody around him. Regardless, 43 seconds left, and third and long, some of them might have to open up again here. But Ahas only catching two passes last season for a total of 79 yards. But here's Bryce Leveros on the quarterback keeper. Stays on his feet all the way to the sideline, able to evade some defensive players. Yeah, and again, that was just a quarterback sweep out to the right side there. And you see Lavia actually getting out there and getting them out of bounds. Good job of forcing them out of bounds. Nice job, though, by Somerville staying on the sideline. Fourth and short, 36 seconds left. So if you can pick up the first down, you got plenty of time here. The lone wideout, Brody Peters to the left. That's the third time on this drive that we've had a defensive penalty help out Somerville. This is the second one that's gave him a first down. I mean, it's just one of those things that's just keeping your composure on defense if you're Gustine. Somerville taking advantage of week one. Leveros looking to throw again for the fourth time. Chased down by Prado and gets the first, or excuse me, didn't even need the first down after that last play, but he does gain a few. Yeah, Prado did a good job of getting initial pressure, and then you see he gets off his guy, spins around, and coming up from the outside there. I'm not sure who that was for Gustine. It actually pushed him out of bounds for minimal gain. Leveros passing again. If he can find someone, it's Rogers. You need to be careful with this timing left. 15 seconds in going, and I believe Somerville does call one more timeout. 13 seconds left. Can Somerville put one more up before the half? Hello, Bear fans. Boyer Construction is proud to help bring you tonight's broadcast of Somerville Bears football. For over 30 years, they've proudly served our communities with an uncompromising commitment to quality, integrity, and client satisfaction. They are meticulous and still believe in the value of handshakes. And they ensure that you get the experience you deserve. Thank you for watching and supporting Bears football. Enjoy the game. 
Somerville with 13 seconds to score before the half, and we reach our El Dorado Septic halftime report. But what is the option here to get in the end zone now? Yeah, so with the rookie, we'll call him kicker, for Somerville, you almost have to get down, I would assume, about the 10-yard line. So you're really looking for like a 15-yard out, if you can complete that, some kind of double pass maybe. Uh, now he rolls out to his right, throws into the end zone. The empty backfield leads to an incomplete pass. Just dropped out at the last second. Jeremy still hoping for a catch. He thought he brought it in, but the officials the are a tad corner. bit yeah. closer. That's on the far corner away from us, and I thought he got it. But you can see right there on that replay, great job there by our camera people. Austin Hike was the intended target, and it looks like they're bringing out a new unit. They're going to line up for a... Do they have trust in the sophomore kicker? Bryson Benitez showing off the sophomore leg. 43-yard field goal attempt here. Okay. Have to wait for the officials to get back there. Four seconds is on the clock. Can we see a missed field goal return? Will it go through the uprights or what is the option? This one bumps up. Trying to draw out the time, throws it in the end, incomplete, and ends the first half. And now we have our Eldorado Septic halftime report in which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the only drive of Somerville that they did not score. No, absolutely, and then it was one that they actually probably could have scored, but nevertheless, like you said, halftime. Eldorado Septic Halftime Report. Somerville Bears 20, Gustine Reds 6. He's Jeremy Hurtado. I'm Levi Flores. Take us through what we saw in the first. Yeah, so Somerville opened the scoring in the first quarter at the 240 mark. Schnabel had a two-yard touchdown run. PAT was good, making it 7-0. And like we said, quickly after that Bryce Rathmill sack strip fumble, Somerville recovered the football, took it quickly down the field again in the first quarter. And Colton Cash that time cashes in with a four-yard touchdown run. From 37 seconds left, the PAT was good. Once again, making it 14 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Right after that, on the ensuing kickoff, Somerville pooch kick. Cal or, I want to keep saying this Calaveras. It's <laughs> Gustine. Uh, fumbles the kickoff return. Somerville takes advantage of it. 10.47 left. This time, Rogers gets into the end zone from a three-yard run down the left side. PAT that time was no good, bad snap. Somerville up 20 to nothing, and we were thinking, uh-oh, here it comes. Somerville could kind of run away with this. We talked about Gustine having to get back, and they did. Gustine marches down the field after that touchdown drive. Levy kicks it off, caps it off with a one-yard touchdown run. Their PAT attempt was no good, giving us 20 to 6 with 2 minutes and 47 seconds left. And then again, at the end of the first quarter half there, P our field goal attempt, no good leaving us with our score of 20 to six at the half. That's been your El Dorado Septic Service Halftime Report, full service septic installation, maintenance and repair. Go to eldoradoseptic.com.
close to the touchdown, he's got the scoreboard like covering the end zone. Uh -huh. Auto Septic Service Incorporated, full service septic installation, maintenance, and repair. With over 25 years experience serving the needs of Tuolumne, Calaveras, and Mono Counties, Sean Dar and the El Dorado Septic Team are your trusted name in local quality septic services. Go to eldoradoseptic.com. That's eldoradoseptic.com. Service done right. At Caldwell Insurance, our local team is dedicated to providing you with quality personal and commercial insurance programs. Whether it's for your home, autos, farm, or business, our professional team of agents can find the best protection at a competitive price. It's our family-owned and operated agency that will provide you and your loved ones protection under our roof. Give us a call at 209-532-5102 or visit our website at caldwell-insurance.com. Hey, Bears fans! Nate Saw and Moore is pleased to support tonight's Bears football broadcast. They're your go-to retailer when you need a steel project to do the job, at home or at work. Visit their store, where friendly, knowledgeable staff will assist you in finding the right steel for the job. Whether it's a chainsaw, blower, trimmer, pressure washer, or anything in between. Nate's Saw and Mower on Longeway Road in Sonora. Benton Roberson CPA's passion is helping people achieve business success and financial independence. While we certainly provide traditional accounting services such as tax preparation, payroll, and bookkeeping, we also offer a variety of advisory services to help with business planning, social security decisions, income and asset growth, tax efficiency, and much more. 
Benton Roberson CPAs is here to help our clients achieve their goals through a generational relationship and wealth building. We hope to see you soon. Chicken Ranch Casino is a proud sponsor of the Somerville Bears Quarterback Club and they support Somerville High student athletes. By working together, Chicken Ranch Casino believes we can all help elevate each and every student athlete's game, both on the field and in the classroom. Lupo. It's a name synonymous with real estate in Tuolumne County and has been for more than 30 years. The latest member of the Lupo family to join the Tuolumne County real estate family is Leanne Lupo at Keller Williams Agency. Leanne is a Tuolumne County native and knows how special the place we call home is. A hard worker who truly cares about her clients. Leanne is a special talent. And Leanne is a Somerville High School graduate and huge bear supporter, so give her a call and see what she can do to help you. If you see her around town, please thank her for helping to make tonight's live stream possible. Levitt United Insurance Services offers quality insurance coverage, a high level of professional service, and a long-term relationship. They have several locations throughout California to serve your needs, including Elk Grove, Lodi, Napa, Roseville, Sonora, Walnut Creek, and Minden, Nevada. As independent agents, they'll research rates and coverage from top insurance companies to find the best insurance rates and insurance plans for you. They do the shopping and comparing, so you can save time and money. Hello, Bear fans. Boyer Construction is proud to help bring you tonight's broadcast of Somerville Bears football. For over 30 years, they've proudly served our communities with an uncompromising commitment to quality, integrity, and client satisfaction. They are meticulous and still believe in the value of handshakes. And they ensure that you get the experience you deserve. Thank you for watching and supporting Bears football. Enjoy the game. Hey, Bears fans. Sindelar Plumbing, a local family-owned business, is proud to support tonight's Bears football broadcast. If you find yourself needing a plumber, call us first. A simple faucet installation, a new energy-efficient water heater, or a new residential and commercial plumbing project, we will help with them all. With over 20 years of plumbing experience, look no further than Sindelar Plumbing for solutions to all your plumbing needs. Second half almost underway as the Somerville Bears have a large lead, 20 to 6 over the Gustine Reds. I'm the voice of choice, Levi Flores. He is Jeremy Hurtado. We had our El Dorado Septic halftime report before going to the break, in which Jeremy told us uh, all through the first half what had happened and what leads us to this 20 to 6 score. But now the Somerville Bears go back out and will receive the second half kick and the Gustine Reds will launch the ball off to them but during the break we were talking about what can change the momentum of this game and Somerville has really taken the lead but right now the Gustine Red offense and how they are running the ball can really dominate this game so Somerville's defense have to watch out they have to keep pounding that middle and stop that inside run from getting five to six yards each play they'll allow two to three but five to six is way too much no, absolutely. And which, what you really have to do if you're Gustine right here is you got to force a three and out or short possession or even a turnover. I mean, turnover is what got them in trouble. They had two of them back-to-back -back possessions. Somerville put 13 points on the board off those turnovers. And if you look at the score, it's a 14-point game. So it, it's, it's, it's not necessarily that the offense for Gustine hasn't done their job, but they've turned the ball over, and that's led to big plays for Somerville. Second half, can they flip the script? We'll see coming up. Jason Leader kicking off for the Gustine Reds. He only had one possible attempt at the extra point earlier in which it was a failed snap and led to only a six-point score. But here the Gustine Reds look to get an onside kick recovered. And they didn't. It was close. But it looks like Dane Macon was able to get on it for Somerville here as you see the replay. Wow. I don't, know, I don't know how he got on it because that drifted out of the hands. Four, Grant Hazen had a chance to pick that up for Gustine, but that's what we talked about. Okay, he's got to make a big play. That was a chance to, to get a turnover, 
so to speak, and they didn't capitalize. Now you give Summerlin a short field, so you got to go. Basically, you got to fly up and make some plays here if you're on defense, if you're Gustine. Leveros with Barajas moving left to right. The pitch out again. Rogers pushes the main defender, but the center getting inside. Prado, he can't make the stop. Barajas still going. First down and more. Right sideline passing the secondary deep into Reds territory. Somerville Bears, Tristan Barajas into the attacking third. Yeah, absolutely. Barajas just, just making guys miss. That's what we talked about earlier with that slipperiness and the speed. Good job of just shaking defenders off. Gustine had him. Prado had a chance to bring him down for a big play, didn't convert, and then out the box he goes down the sideline. Huge play for Somerville on the right within striking distance here on the second play of the second half. Palomino was the one to get there for the Gustine defense, now working both sides of the ball and doing it well. This time, Austin Hike for the offensive Somerville. Can't cut the edge with his speed, but he cuts back into the five end zone. Touchdown, Somerville! <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Another untouched moment. Great job of getting out there and blocking for Somerville and Hike. They're doing a good job of reading the blocks, staying patient, not outrunning everybody. You see here he puts the brakes on, cuts back, makes a guy miss, so he did get touched. My apologies. Nevertheless, into the land of quick six, and just like that, it's Somerville up 26-6, to six, pinning the extra point. Only 26 seconds into the second half, and seven more points is added. 21-6, Bears football on NorCal Sports TV. Hey, Bears fans. Sindelar Plumbing, a local family-owned business, is proud to support tonight's Bears football broadcast. If you find yourself needing a plumber, call us first. A simple faucet installation, a new energy-efficient water heater, or a new residential and commercial plumbing project, we will help with them all. With over 20 years of plumbing experience, look no further than Sindelar Plumbing for solutions to all your plumbing needs. Austin Hike finds the end zone for the Somerville touchdown, 27-6. to Bears leading the Gustine Reds. I'm Levi Flores. He's Jeremy Hurtado, and here is Benitas kicking off for Somerville again. And this time they'll go deep, no tricks, no gimmicks, and received inside the 15, but another fumbled catch. Bears just trying to find the legs and tackle him down, but still staying up. Finally pushed down at the 20. Yeah, Palomino, he's having a difficult time catching those kickoffs. That's like the third one he's dropped. He, he does a good job of being slippery and trying to get upfield. He runs about 115 yards and gets about three going back and forth. If, if he could actually come forward and make a catch on the kickoff and just hit it, be much more successful for the special teams. Instead, they got to go to work from their own 18-yard line. And this, again, it, we talked about it right before the end of the first half. You got to answer. Because you don't want to fall behind, keep falling behind and buy more as Somerville just keeps pushing the gas on that offense. We'll see the mid-game changes for the Gustine Reds as Leva will be back under center, taking his time handing this off and met by Arian Schnabel for a few yard gain. Yeah, Palomino going back to that power run that they started the game with and then they did a good job on that last drive. You see here, handoff, and he just makes one guy miss, gets up in the second level. Picks up four. Gustine gave Somerville a short field to start the second half, and Somerville didn't return the favor and said you could start from the 20, so now the Gustine Reds, they're taking their time offensively, but if they truly want to get back in this, they need to keep moving faster. But here's that inside run from Leva, the quarterback keep up the middle. Arian Schnabel, back-to-back -back plays, taking down the man that gets him to the 40. And again, that's that same situation where nobody is over the center. But Leva just takes a snap, goes up the middle this time, makes the guy miss. And if it wasn't for Schnabel, he's off to the races. And he picks up 12 yards all the way out near the 40 yard line. They're going to mark him just short, in fact, at the 39. Regardless, it's a first down for Gustine. 
gets them out of the shadow of their own goal post. Schnabel in this game last year had three tackles against this Gustine offense and had done that already in the first half of this game. So Schnabel really taking over that defensive side and saying we had the hardy party, but Schnabel is here to play. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what you need from usually your linebacker position, but he's playing that safety position. I mean, that, that's one of those things that you uh, look for from your safety is being the leading tackler on the team. So uh, they, they do have kind of a different defensive look. you got a 4-3, but the outside linebackers are actually almost outside of the defensive ends. So it's almost like a 6-1 look. Two wideouts for Leva. Flag flies in. We'll see what that is as there is no gain on the play. Yeah, I think that's going to be an illegal block by one of the interior offensive linemen on Gustine. He tried to cut block. And, uh, yeah, not, not sure you can do that from behind as, as he dove at one of the Bears' defensive line legs. But we'll, we'll see if the officials sort this out. Also in last year's game, Gustine had picked up 13 penalties. Somerville had seven, but it looks like Somerville has actually contained themselves and have only drawn two penalties. Yeah, and, and that's one of those things that we talked about is just keeping your composure. Gustine kept that last drive that the Somerville scored on before the first half alive with three or four defense penalties that gave him first downs and, and a key one on a fourth down stop that would have turned the ball back over with two minutes left. Instead, Prado takes an extra little penalty. shove at the Somerville quarterback, gets the 15-yard penalty. So, again, and then this one's a 15-yard penalty for blocking below the waist on a play on the backside that he had no need to do. So it's just kind of one of those disciplined pair of penalties that drives coaches crazy. Second and a plane ride for the Gustine Reds. Leva dropping back. Dipping down the pass to the Somerville sideline, but overthrows Grant Hazan, the intended senior target. Yeah, and Hazan's run the wheel pattern that time. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I know it's second and long, but that, that's not really what you do, Gustine. I think I'd rather have seen you run the ball up the middle and try and get 5-10 back and make it a manageable third down. Instead, now it's third and 25-ish. So, yeah, that, that's not the position you want to be in if you're any offensive coordinator. One of the previous pass attempts we saw from Gustine and Leva, Bryce Rathmill was the first on the scene and made it bloody. So hopefully Leva can get out of that, but they're not going to pass. It's Leva down the middle, wrapped down and around by number 13, Luke Larson, able to make the stop and make it fourth and long for Gustine. Right, and that's a gain of seven. And I, like I said, I would have rather seen them do that last down, make it a third down and 14-ish. Instead, you're in a fourth and... 14 and it's you're at your own looks like 30 yard 34 yard line you got a punt here if you're Gustine even though you're down by 20 down 21 points 9 minutes 20 seconds 26 seconds left in the third um, if Gustine does punt here is this a sign alluding to them uh, not giving up, but just allowing Somerville to take the place? Or is this just a, a point where you are forced to punt the ball? We'll, we'll find out after this commercial break. Hello, Bears fans. Black Oak Casino Resort is very proud to help bring you tonight's live streaming of the Somerville Bears football game. If you haven't been to Black Oak Casino Resort recently, now is the time to come by and check us out. Whether you enjoy the entertainment at Willow Creek Lounge, the five-star RV park, the beautiful Black Oak Hotel and Conference Center, the bowling alley and family fun center, all the games our casino offers, or the fine dining at Seven Sisters Restaurant, it's all there waiting for you. Thank you for watching and supporting Bears football. Enjoy the game. Welcome back here. Gustine breaks the huddle, and they took the time out there. So as a coach, your spidey sensors go up because, okay, look, it's fourth and the long ways. Uh, that's what I thought. They're, they're going to go for it here because if you take the time out, you almost have to go for it. Otherwise, take the delay game, punt the ball, no, nobody's hurt. Instead, come out fourth down. We'll see what they do. Leva under center. Pitches it out, looking down the field, and it is picked off by Brody Peters, the corner at the 50. He'll take it from east to west, and Brody Peters trying to find a hole. 
gets down the right sideline and pushed out last second as a flag, two flags come down. That was Orlando Lopez dropping down a defender, blindside tackled him. But let's talk about Brody Peters. He already has a catch in this one, just shy of the end zone, and then picks this one off, thrown short of the intended target in Osiel Torres. Yeah, that's one of those ones where as you're a defensive coach, you see it and you're like, just knock it down. We get the we, we, we get the ball and then you're like, okay, oh wait, we might take it to the house. And then you get the, the block by, like you said, Orlando Lopez. It's going to end up cost the Somerville some field position but it doesn't negate the interception and the return. Most of it, it comes up to the 30 yard, eight yard line. So yeah, it, it's one of those things. Great job by Brody Peters. He, he was able to make the interception, got upfield, showed he can make some things happen with the ball in his hand. And if it wasn't for him blocking them back or blindside block, you'd have set them up inside the red zone. Still great field position for Somerville. And I expect Lopez to be running at practice on Monday because that one, uh, no need for that, and also just puts them in bad territory. No matter what the score, you have to make sure you're making the best decisions. But here is Austin Hike breaking free himself for the Bears offense again. Hike is gone. Touchdown, Somerville. Yep, untouched down the left side, and I think that that might do it there, folks. 33 to six. You see the as the play is happening, Gustine's head just goes straight down. Kind of look at the grass. Uh, Somerville, great job there, Hike. Showing off the wheels, making a good cut, and he was gone down the sideline. And what about uh, Reese Wynn as well? I mean, he's an offensive lineman, and he was keeping up with Austin Hike all the way down to the 15-yard line. Uh, he is definitely one of the leaders on this team as Benitez will put it through the uprights once more, 34-6, to and the Somerville Bears, will they repeat what we saw last season? Well, there's still plenty of season to go. Graduate Robert Caldera started construction in Tuolumne County in 1984, was licensed in 1990, and has since been serving Tuolumne and Calaveras counties for over 25 years. He's now excited to have his son and Somerville High graduate Chris join the team to help and eventually take over the family business. So whether you need a new home, remodel, deck, window replacement, or other project, large or small, please consider this locally owned and family operated business, rcaldera.com. They're on Facebook and Instagram too, and go Bears. Somerville 34, Gustine 6, and from my point of view, we do not have a face of the team yet, but we do know that this Somerville team is good, and they don't need a face of the team. They just have to play good together, and right now, Austin Hike has just shown immaculate effort offensively. Uh, our score here is 34 to 6, but Jeremy, update us with Sonora Oakdale. Uh, Sonora Oakdale, Sonora uh, gave up a touchdown at the start of the third quarter. It's 20 to 12. Oakdale leads out of the corral. Also, Calaveras just put one in the end zone, making it 22 to 13, and trying to come back against Stone Ridge Christian. We'll have more of these updates next week for Striking Gold, the MLL. Watch that on NorCal Sports TV. But here is another fumbled kick return. He's going to pick it up again, and that's Leva, uh, not Palomino like we've seen prior. And Leva will be, uh, I mean, he wasn't necessarily tackled down. He slipped down, and they have a long field to go for the second time in a row. Yeah, and right now Somerville's speed is just too much for the defense for Gustine to handle. I mean, it's been Hike, Cash, Schnavel, uh, Barajas, Rogers. I mean, just coming at you from all these different players for Somerville, and Gustine's had no answer on the defensive end. Leva, left side handoff. Tackle down by Riley Neves. I asked Coach Colin Lane of Gustine what the ultimate goal is for their season, and he said that the only goal this year is to have all seven position groups giving 100% effort every day at practice and in the game. And if they have all seven position groups operating at max capacity every day, we will be very competitive and a tough team to play against. And honestly, right now, they are playing really good, but the Somerville Bears um, just are pushing a little bit harder. But uh, you have to give it up to the Gustine Reds because they are playing at max effort. No, absolutely. Somerville's kind of come out and, and imposed their their offensive philosophy that they changed this year against Gustine. And, and turnovers hasn't helped Gustine either. Uh, Gustine's shown some pop and some promise. But in the end, it's been it's been really their lack of focus and 
and discipline that's kind of done Gustine in. Leva, another keeper. Ball flew out, and I think they blew the whistle two seconds too early because he did not hit the ground yet. But Gustine will catch a break and continue to have the ball on a short third down play. Yeah, and that's the second or third time now that, that Levy's went to the ground and may or may not have turned the ball over and they've cooled it down. So one of those things that, again, Gustine's going to get to work on and practice next week is hanging on to the ball and ball security. Want to shout out to Ron and Cindy Roberson, Jamie and Stacy Toon watching in Mammoth Lakes. Thanks for watching NorCal Sports TV. You can also comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from. Have a chance to be uh, featured in our NorCal Sports TV broadcast. Somerville 34, Gustine 6, seven minutes left to play in the third. This one's going to be close for Gustine, and they move the chains immediately. First down, Gustine. Got some, some wholesale changes in here on this drive for Somerville on a defensive side. Coming in, Isaiah Renteria. Also coming on the defensive line, Hunter Anderson. And it looks like number 54, Trenton Stone in there to play some defense too. So kind of getting some of the, the other guys in the game here for Somerville. Larson up playing defensive end position as well. Riley Neves once again tackling down Palomino. And one thing that I've noticed in this Gustine offense is that um, they don't go to that pitch out option in the back. You see Leo Montez, he always wraps around the outside and it's not even a thought to Leva or the offense at all. I think we saw it in the first quarter a few times, uh, whether it worked out or not, they just don't even use that as an option. I think Somerville caught on, so they're probably holding that in their back pocket. We'll bring it out at some point just to see if that they can have a breakaway. to the 40 yard line Palomino goes and this will move the chains first down Gustine and again like I said Gustine has some weapons and Palomino and Vargas I mean they've done a good job of running up the middle uh, Levy has also done a good job of, of running the ball with, from his quarterback position it's just been a fact of not being able to keep things consistent long enough before they make an undisciplined play or, or some kind of negative play. There's that pitch out option again. Doesn't go there, but it will be another decent five-yard gain for the Reds' offense. Yep, and here comes uh, four more guys back to the starting off defensive line for Somerville as Rathmel comes back in. Also, 55, Wyatt Castonia checking back in for Somerville and Reese Wynn. So good rotation times there for Somerville from the defensive line, getting guys in and out. Gustine starting to move the ball. Here's the handoff option, met again, and lost a few yards for himself. That is Sebastian Vargas, the sophomore. We saw him early. He had a burst away take in the first quarter and haven't seen him much since. Yeah, you see on the replay there, nice job there by Bryce Rathmill. He engages the blocker, shed the block, and was able to get out there. And he didn't necessarily make the tackle, but he created a problem for Vargas and then able to have the rest of his Somerville Bears teammates rally up and make the tackle. Just over four minutes to play in the third quarter. Somerville 34, Gustine 6. Here's the push down the middle. Few yard gain, but I believe it's fourth down. It's going to be close. I'm not sure. I haven't see seen it. a si signal yet, and it looks like they are going to give him a first down. A little generous give by the official on the low side line to the 49 in Bears territory. We haven't seen the Reds cross the 50 yard line in three drives. Yeah, and another developing situation for Gustine is Jacob Palom Palomino is over here on the sideline, kind of shaking his leg and 
trying to walk off something. So that's something you can't have with only 21 guys on the roster. You can't have one of your your, your big time offensive weapons getting hurt in the first game of the season. Up the gut, almost breaking away. Vargas drops it in the end, and the official going to blow this one dead too. All 11 Somerville Bears players in shock. The ball jarred loose. We'll get a closer look. Vargas definitely lost that one, but the officials blew it dead in the heat of the moment. Somerville going to lose out on another possession, but this one will stay Gustine to the 39. Yeah. Fortunate there for Gustine that they hang on to possession. Leva, handoff, middle, gets a few yards, second and long for them. Want to shout out Gino and Andrea watching uh, Wyatt Castonia of the Somerville Bears from McCall, Idaho. See Gustine, second and eight. Still haven't used that pitch out option. Still continuing to wait for that play to develop. Leva hands it off again. And I mean, the play is working. There's no need to change it if the play is continuing to work. And right now, the Somerville defense, um, other teams will probably look at this and say, hey, if Gustine can do this to Somerville and then maybe Dos Palos next week, we should probably try the same thing and keep pounding that center. No, absolutely. And that's one of those things is because coaches get to see a film. So it's 34 to 6 right now. If you're Gus team, you know, hey, this game might, might be getting a little away from you. So you start kind of thinking, hey, what do we want to not show on film for next week? Because Gus Dean plays Stone Ridge Christian next week. Okay, which, uh, same thing for Somerville. Hey, maybe we don't show that much. Nothing nothing too crazy. Because they played Dos Palos next week, who's down in Los Banos tonight. You know, and then again, so that's that's the joy of coaching sometimes is, is things uh, – don't always go the way they think is right now is Xander Levia comes up limping and he's hobbling again. That's not what you need if you're Gustine. It looks like Andrew Wilson's going to come in and take the snaps for him. Looks like it might just be a cramp though as he's grabbing his leg and coaches are stretching him out on the sideline. Hopefully that's the scenario. They do give Gustine the first down, but now it is Andrew Williams, the senior backup, taking the place, giving it to Palomino, and he earns four for the red offense. Yeah, new quarterback, same same play. N nothing changes there. Just hand it to Palomino. You know, it's been Palomino to the left, Palomino to the right, Vargas to the left, Vargas to the right. I mean, right now it's working for five yards of carry. Why, why change it, like you said? Got a few more Bear fans watching. Mia and the West Camp family uh, watching Mateo Murphy and Tanner Klein. Thanks for being part of the Bears family and the NorCal Sports TV family. Just over a minute left in the third, second and six for Gustine. Hands it down the middle and keeps lunging forward Palomino, and this offense continues to work for him. No, and I really like Palomino. As one of those players that you see, he's only a sophomore. He, he's going to be one that they kind of build their offense around from that B-back position uh, or full-back position. Uh, he, just, just kind of a player. He, he, he does well on defense, too. He's been around the ball. So, like I said, if you're if you're looking for positives from Coach Lane and, and Gustine, you're going to see some. Unfortunately, I mean, it's it's 34 to six. Third and one, Palomino. Oh, this one might be stop shy. I believe he was, and they're going to mark him down at the 20 for no gain, and it's fourth and two. Yeah, and I think that might have been Rathmill again. We'll see who it is. It is exactly that. He got right off the block. And, and, and wrapped him up and said, you're not going anywhere. So now a huge fourth down coming up. And look who's back on the field for Gustine. It is Leva. And we'll see what he can do for the team if he can uh, take that quarterback keeper up the middle again, which has gained him plenty of yards and continued to push their drives forward. But that ends the quarter. Number three, Forrest will switch fields for the last time in this one as the Somerville Bears look at a possible victory, 34-6. We'll find out in the final 12. 
Jones and Construction brings a can-do attitude to every aspect of a construction project, making dreams a reality for its customers. The Roberson team is made up of professionals who know how to make the construction process a positive experience. Roberson Construction focuses on quality and integrity to maximize results and minimize stress. Whatever your construction needs, a remodel, new home, commercial project, consider Roberson Construction. You can find us locally and on Facebook or Instagram. We look forward to listening to you. Since 1968, Seuss Insurance has been a leader in providing health, dental, vision, Medicare supplements, and life insurance to thousands of individuals and small businesses throughout California. Who wouldn't want the best insurance agent Yvonne has ever had? Seuss Insurance Services is comprised of a team of insurance professionals ready to assist you with whatever insurance plan you may need, or perhaps you already have a medical insurance plan. However you look for your health insurance, online or offline, we're here to help you with all your insurance needs. SeussIns.com the Somerville Bears 12 minutes away from a 1-0 start to the season, but the Gustine Reds have 12 minutes to possibly uh, bring a comeback into play as well. We'll see if the Gustine Reds have the momentum to get them there or if the Somerville Bears will continue their dominancy through this game for the last quarter. I'm Levi Flores. He's Jeremy Hurtado. What do you got for us? Update from the Corral. Sonora, 27-20, to 20, down to Oakdale. Wow. Nine minutes left, so Sonora... Scored a couple times or in the third quarter. Cuts it to seven point lead late in our midway through the fourth quarter of play in Oakdale. Leva drops the snap. A few bears are in the backfield. It looks like Astine's going to hold on, but it doesn't matter as it is fourth down. Turnover, Bears football. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of those things you can't do on fourth down is, is drop the snap. He does. He tries to just crawl forward instead. Good job there by Somerville defensive line. Just clogging up the holes. Turn the ball back over to the offense and uh, we'll see who comes out and takes the snaps. I would assume it's going to probably be Leveros just because he's a sophomore. Hasn't got a lot of snaps. But we'll see how, how Somerville tries to play this here in the fourth quarter. I completely agree with you. I'd like to see Bryce Leveros out there to continue play for this Somerville offense. Uh, we got another shout out. Ry Atkins, former Somerville Bear. He was actually on the varsity team uh, last year, but he has since transferred going to Modesto Christian. Uh, pay attention to basketball season because he is going to be good and he's going to make a scene in Northern California with Modesto Christian. So pay attention for the name Ry Atkins. This pitch out dropped and fumbled. Gustine has a chance and they do just that. That Reds ball, and now Gustine in scoring territory. Yeah, that time it was that toss pitch. That time out to Tanner Klein, the slot back, and he couldn't come away with it. And instead, Gustine gets the ball right back on offense with the chance to put some more points on the board. taking an extended time in the huddle. They do have a chance at a first down before the end zone. It's a slim margin in between that pylon and the first down marker. We'll see what Leva has in store for us. They're going to send a wide out all the way down. That is Osil Torres. And then they have at the bottom of the screen Alex Gomez. Leva bad snap again. Yeah, and uh, so, so here, here's the situation we talked about a minute ago, right? If I'm coaching Gustine, I might pull Leva. Say, look, I know you're banged up. I know that, that this doesn't happen. That's two snaps in a row you fumbled. Uh, maybe there's a situation where he might not be the best option for us right now. Get get the backup of some snaps. That was Andrew Williams. And, and it, I mean, it's one of those things where you know you want to gut it out. You know he, he, he's a senior. He wants to play. But it might be save him for next week in a situation where you can – you know, have a bigger impact on the game. And if you go back and watch that play, we had already had the replay go by, but Wyatt Castonia as a junior, uh, very heads up play. He actually tried dipping down underneath the center and stripping that ball away from Leva as it was a free ball in play, but Castonia just couldn't get there fast enough. But that is something to look at in the future if there's a quarterback under center that may lose it. Palomino. Balls forward for a couple. Palomino moving the ball for a gain of two, but it's third and long still. Uh, this situation, you go for the end zone, you go for the first down. So, so I was just thinking about that. I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing some kind of counter option, you know, that they've been running that, that 
dive with the fullback, dive with the fullback, fake that dive and come back with something with those wings coming back in motion. And you might get Somerville to over pursue and, and get yourself an easy first down, maybe even a touchdown if you're Gustine. Leva does it himself. Leva goes up tackle. Instead, he takes it down, and it's I think he's going to be about a yard shy, so it's going to bring up a fourth and one. That was Tanner Klein on the tackle for Somerville, too. And also Hunter Anderson wrapping up the feet so Leva couldn't move any further. So it seems like we were just here a moment ago, right? Fourth and one. Gustine has a chance to kind of help themselves out and put points on the board. Instead, they turned it over. This time, let's see what they do. Coach taking a while to get the play call in. Gustine seems like they're in no hurry to call the play, so not sure. I'm still waiting for that pitch out play, too. I, I know it's going to happen at some point in these last few minutes, but if they pitch out here, they do have two wideouts that they can possibly go to uh, in case they don't have a lane for themselves. But... I'm not the Gustine coach either, but here's Leva. And timeout Gustine, okay. Nine All minutes, right. one second left in the fourth. Gustine, will they score, will they give it up, or will it be a first? Find out next. Area Foundation remains focused on its mission of strengthening its communities. It does that through three functions, assisting donors, awarding grants, and leading the community. The vision of the Sonora Area Foundation is that it will be the benchmark for exemplary practices in the philanthropy field. You can go to sonoraarea.org to learn more. Sonora Area Foundation, for good, forever. Visit Tuolumne County is proud to bring you tonight's broadcast of Somerville Bears football. As the official tourism bureau of Tuolumne County, California, their mission is to enhance economic growth by increasing tourism to Tuolumne County. VTC invites visitors to experience iconic Yosemite explorations, authentic California gold country discoveries, and unforgettable high Sierra outdoor adventures. You can enjoy endless outdoor recreation, state and local parks, sightseeing, stargazing, history, shopping, wine and cider tastings, relaxation, and more. 34 to 6, the Somerville Bears over the Gustine Reds with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter, but the Gustine Reds not giving up, just like head coach Colin Lane had said. We need to give it our all for all four quarters, no matter what the score, keep pushing. And they had a fumble recovery, and now they're on the brink of scoring for the second time in the game. Leva under center. Palomino is behind him with two wideouts, one to each side. Leva is going to take it. He has a very large hole, and he has a very large space of land for the end zone. Touchdown, Gustine. Yeah, and if, you, if we watch the replay here, I, I want to point out what Torres, the wide receiver, does out here for Gustine. I mean, he, he ran a pass pattern. And you'll see it here in the corner of the screen. He ran a pass pattern, jumped up like he was going to get the ball, and then that distracted the Somerville defensive back. Colton Cash, just enough to give the quarterback a chance to get out there and, and, and get into the end zone. So, you know, the little things that coaches see in, on film and, and the effort you talked about, everybody buying in for the whole game. Here's a receiver that he knows the ball's not coming. He could just win, okay, hey, I'm going to chatter my feet. I'm going to get out here and, and not do anything. Instead, he runs a pattern, fakes like he's going up for a fade, gets the defender to bite, and then the, runner, the quarterback runs underneath it for a touchdown. So, great job and great effort there by Torres, the junior wide receiver for Gustine. And it looks like Gustine is going to line up for the two-point conversion, which is very smart with the way they are able to move the ball. I expect Laver or Palomino just to follow up the center, but we'll see. Laver takes it, and he is not going to get the edge taken down. The Bear Pack is there. No two-point conversion will be converted here as the Bears continue to lead 34-12. Yeah, good job by Brody Peters here. Just getting out there and staying can contain, stringing it out to the sideline. Tree Service is here tonight to bring you Bears football. They specialize in comprehensive tree maintenance and removal. The skilled arborists and staff at Nate's Tree Service have over 30 years experience serving residential and commercial clients in Amador, Calaveras, Tuolumne, and Mariposa counties. They bring their unique understanding of the trees of the western slope of the Sierra to a wide range of tasks related to tree health, maintenance, and removal. 
Sierra Pacific is proud to support Somerville Bears football. At Sierra Pacific Industries, we understand our greatest strength is the people who choose to build a career with us. We offer many opportunities for personal and professional growth, from entry level to skilled trades, from truck drivers to sales managers, from foresters to engineers. Become one of our valued team members as part of a growing third generation family owned forest products company. Somerville 34, Gustine 12 in Gustine. I'm the voice of choice, Levi Flores. He is Jeremy Hurtado and the Gustine Reds uh, pulling something together here in the fourth quarter. There's still nine minutes to play and the Somerville Bears are hungry and they want to continue their play so that they don't go down. And here, uh, good reception falling to the ground to make sure that nothing further happens. I believe that was number 51, Dane Macon. Uh, a family member of the legendary Steve Leave of the Sonora Wildcats broadcasting team back in the day uh, with my dad, Justin Flores. Uh, Dane Macon making a good play there. I think that's the first time he's touched the ball this season. Yeah, and as an offensive slash defensive lineman, you don't get that opportunity very good, very often. So good job of there on the kickoff team just doing his job, get the ball, get on the ground, don't try and do anything special. Give yourself a good field position. Leveros back into play for Somerville, going to hand it off down the middle. Gustine Red sniff it out early. It is a two-yard gain for second and eight. Yeah, that time Cash, not as much for hunting room as he had on the outside the last couple times he's touched it, but still yet gets positive yards for Somerville. Kyle Salaya entering play for Somerville as well. It's on the front lines of the O-line. Somerville resorting uh, to the play clock, allowing the time to tick down before they make their plays. In motion is Kelton Cowley. Leveros will hand it off. Up the gut again. This one might be gone. Bye. Into the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Somerville. The handoff to the open man of Colton Cash. Somerville does it again. Yeah, that time Cash just got around the outside and turned the afterburners on as it was 54 yards down the sideline. You see him here. He hits the hole, and there is nobody catching him. Bad angle taken by Palomino, the junior, and Cash says, I am going to the house. Somerville going to result back to the kicker, Benitez. Sophomore, last time it was fumbled. This time it is up, and it is good. 41-12, Somerville leading the Gustine Reds. One minute drive and eight minutes left. Burner, financial advisor at Thrivent, is proud to help bring tonight's Bears football game live to your home. As a Somerville High alum and a member of the Bears quarterback club, Scott is instrumental in supporting Somerville High School and Bears football in many ways. The next time you see Scott, be sure to say hello and thank him and Thrivent for supporting the Bears football family. That's Scott Burner, serving you in retirement and insurance. Sindelar Tree Service is a local family owned and operated business specializing in meeting fire clearance requirements, hazardous tree removal and emergency jobs. With over 20 years experience, our employees are safe, knowledgeable and professional. Voted 2021's best of 209 by 209 Multimedia, we're happy to provide our customers with quality work at affordable rates. Proud to offer discounts to veterans? Call today to schedule your free estimate. 209-559-0124. Gustine going to get the ball back for the final eight minutes of play. Somerville scoring with Colton Cash, making it 41-12. to Somerville will be facing Dust Palace next week, in which that will be a, a difficult game. That'll be at Thorsted Field at home. So if you're in the area of Tuolumne, come on by Friday night, uh, 5 o'clock for JV, about 7.15 for Varsity. And here's Benitez, the sophomore kicker, and to put it at the 33-yard line, and the Gustine Reds catch it and hold on this time. Yeah, Leiter able to catch the pop-up kick that time and wisely just goes to the ground trying not to... Turn the ball back over for Gustine like we've seen earlier. Just... 
Any updates from the MLL? We do. We got a score over for an Amador. Amador coming back from, uh, you know, not playing football. They're up 40 to 12 over Forest Hill in the third quarter. Five minutes left. Amador Buffalo is trying to make a statement as Leva pitches this out. I knew it was coming, but that's why they haven't ran it. That is Leo Montez getting thrown down by Orlando Lopez for the second time. They didn't throw the flag this time, but it could have been somewhat of a taunting call, and I know the coaches aren't going to like this. Yeah, this is a different version of the same play. Some rules are running that toss sweep, but, I mean, it, that works when you have more speed than the opponent. But right now, I think Somerville, if we lined up and had a track meet, I think Somerville takes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and maybe sixth uh, out there. They got some guys that can just fly. So I, that's one of those things where probably why they haven't ran a lot has just been, hey, let's run up the middle and, and make a guy miss. But uh, it, it's good to see them kind of try to stretch things out a little bit. Three-yard loss, second and 12. Leva fakes it to Palomino, pitches it back, and it's going to work out for a yard or two. Uh, what was a broken play, Leva barely escapes it and keeps it up for the Reds' offense. Yeah, that time he, he was going to the ground as he fell, and he gets the pitch off, maybe didn't get it off before he hit the ground. But, hey, that's why it's high school football. We don't have the, the VAR like we do in, <laughs> in, in other sports. But regardless, it only picked up a yard, so... Brings up a third and long, and, and Gustin's in no hurry to, to get things going here. We got a <laughs> final score over from the Corral, too, as Oakdale holds on and beats Somerville 27 to 20. Another year goes down for Sonora without the win over Oakdale. The last time Sonora was able to beat their longtime 100-year rival was 2016 as Jeremy wants the flag here, <laughs> spiking the ball down yeah. to the ground after the play. I mean, you're yeah. a coach. You want to see it, and for me, it's uh, it's always, hey, no matter what happens out there, you just have to follow the rules of football, and that was pretty obvious. Well, I mean, yeah, Leo Montez, he ran that counter. He got crushed by 51, Dane Macon again, who wasn't fooled. Then he just spikes the ball right at the ground in front of Macon. I mean, that's a, one of those things that's usually an automatic 15-yard penalty, but officials just kind of talked to him and said, hey, knock it off. Back to punt, leader, steps to the right side in deep trouble. Able to get rid of it, put it into the middle of the field. No one's back there. Somerville going to try to run it down, but shouldn't touch that one. Oh, no! What are you doing? A rookie mistake, and the Gustine Reds are back on offense. Isaiah Walker just runs down, and I'm not sure what he was thinking. <laughs> Let the ball roll. It's going to be your ball instead. He runs down there and tries to grab the ball, and he already knows. Yeah, he's getting talked to on the sideline, but... I mean, that's one of those things that, okay, 41 to 12, it's not going to be something that, that costs them the game. But that's one of those, again, we talked about earlier, teachable moments with young players. He just runs down there and tries to grab the ball, gets a hand on it instead, turns it over to Gustine. And now Gustine's got a chance to put some more points on the board with just over five minutes left to go. An interesting take for the Somerville special teams, and uh, that might be the only time we see that this season because they're going to be practicing that on Monday not to touch that ball. or I don't know what he saw in order for him to attempt to get that, uh, but it's definitely a mistake that does not want to be repeated. No, absolutely. And like I said, that's a, that's a learning mistake. It's, it's one of those things that they're going to go watch film, and they're, they're going to just point out, hey, we don't need to do that. It, it, it's okay. It's, we just get the ball over here. Unfortunately, uh, you know, again, it, it, it's, it's fortunate that it's not going to cost them a football game. As Gustine looking to return to the end zone, let's look at next week's opponent for them. They will be at Stone Ridge Christian, which is a future league opponent for them. But we had a chance to do homecoming last year for Somerville in which they played Stone Ridge Christian, and Stone Ridge Christian bullied Somerville. They didn't win. Somerville ended up taking it by about eight points, but Stone Ridge bullied the entire game, and they play uh, similar styles of offense, Gustine and Stone Ridge Christian, but Stone Ridge, they just have a lot of bigger guys, and they continue to push in a dog pile until the refs blow the whistle. Yeah, they do, and, and then Stone Ridge has given Calaveras a game here up in Calaveras, but 
Last report we got there, it was 22 to 13, Stone Ridge Christian. Uh, you're, you're right, they, they run a similar offense as Gustine does here, even so much so that they don't really run those wide receivers like Gustine does. They bring everybody in, and it's everybody at the line of scrimmage. We're going to, you know, ugly right, ugly left type of situation, and all of a sudden they run that pop pass for a touchdown or, or they break the big run. So it, it will be an interesting situation for them to, to kind of get to see that offense back at them next week. Flags come out to stop the play. And it's going to be false start on Gustine. One thing we didn't get a chance to talk about, too, is earlier today, Somerville's JV football team kicks off their season with a win 21-8 to over Gustine here. Improve, like I said, improving 1-0. So great job for the JV football team for Somerville as well. First and 15 for Gustine, under four minutes left. And Leva in the offense of the Reds, slow to the line. Yeah, if you're Gustine, you really want to push one in here to the end zone just to kind of, you're going to end up going for two. Make it 41-20, it looks a lot more respectable on the scoreboard. Uh, it, it, it gets you some positive things in the second half. So halfback option pass wide open. End zone. He misses this one. Osil Torres couldn't pull it in. The student section's going nuts, but they can't see over the lines. What a beautifully ran play. Executed very well, but you have to reel it in. Yeah, the defender for Somerville that time sucked in on the run. Receiver's wide open, just goes right through his hands. And, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. Brings up second down of 15 from the 21-yard line. I mean, that, that was a great play call, great execution uh, by Williams to throw a nice pass, and unfortunately, just didn't come down within the end zone. Torres will stay on his island off the right side of Leva. Put the man in motion. Leva looking to pass. A pack of bears, four of them trying to chase Leva down. Cutting through, dragged by the back of the jersey, and they're going to call this horse collar on number 84, Colton Fox. Yeah, and I think they might have called late hit. I don't know if it was really a horse collar, but he was about six yards out of bounds before he got spun down. So we'll see how they play. They could call either one. We'll see how they go. Either way, I think it's going to be a first down for Gustine inside the 10-yard line. Now it looks like the official, and this is what I was going to point out as the flag was thrown, but uh, he tugged at his jersey, and uh, the horse collar tackle, it doesn't have to be inside the pads, but it's around the shoulder plate, and to me it looked like he grabbed the back of the jersey. Uh, we'll see what the officials call here, but like you said, he was uh, outside the line. Yep, you got it. Horse collar is what they called, so regardless, either way, whether they called it late hit or horse collar, it was going to be a first down for Augustine. The plan is simple, first and goal at about the eight yard line. That will give the Reds first and goal about the seven yard line. Okay, seven yard line if you listen to the, <laughs> play, the, to the guy at the stadium here. Again, we have a little little difficult angle there, but nonetheless, first down and goal for Gustine with three minutes and counting left to go. That's a first down. Leva with Palomino behind him. Off the right side slot is Jason Leader. Leader cuts in motion. Leader gets it here, trying to push away from the defense. And he's still on his feet, shifting down and doesn't go through. And again, this, this is a play here that Gusky's going to watch on film, and, and they're going to be able to teach. As you see, he, he bounces it outside where you got six guys that are red jerseys inside that are pushing Somerville guys outside. If he just puts his foot down, cuts hard inside, he's probably going to get in the end zone, if not down inside the five, maybe down to the three. Instead, he tries to go outside where all the all the Somerville defenders are, and then has to spin around and pinball around, and that's when the ball comes out. So it's one of those things you really got to know, hey, I got to put my foot in the ground and, and go. North, south, not east, west sometimes. <laughs> Under two minutes to play. Leva takes the snap, hands it off, looking in zone. They've got it. Touchdown, Gustine. Yeah, that, that's Palomino there, and he deserves that. I, I really feel like he deserved that tonight. Definitely. I mean, 
He's been the workhorse. He's been the guy that, that's done a lot of the work for him. They ran that, and they faked the pitch out, and Summerville kind of flew it. That he was able to cut back in underneath, as you see here. And then it's just Will. He's moving his feet, running guys over. Fox tries to bring him down, but he gets drug into the end zone. So great job there for Palomino, the sophomore running back for Gustin. And Gervikram uh, limping off the field from the Gustine line. Looks like possible right ankle injury for him as the Gustine Reds will stay on the field for a two-point conversion and attempts to make it 41-20. The back is Vargas. Leva, pitch out. Not going to do it. That was Andrew Williams, the backup quarterback, not going to get there. And Jackson Naher, the offensive or defensive lineman, excuse me, of Somerville, making the tackle. Score remains 41-18. Final two minutes up after this. Roberson CPA's passion is helping people achieve business success and financial independence. While we certainly provide traditional accounting services such as tax preparation, payroll, and bookkeeping, we also offer a variety of advisory services to help with business planning, social security decisions, income and asset growth, tax efficiency, and much more. Benton Roberson CPAs is here to help our clients achieve their goals through a generational relationship and wealth building. We hope to see you soon. Bears fans, Nate Saw and Moore is pleased to support tonight's Bears football broadcast. They're your go-to retailer when you need a steel project to do the job at home or at work. Visit their store where friendly, knowledgeable staff will assist you in finding the right steel for the job. Whether it's a chainsaw, blower, trimmer, pressure washer, or anything in between. Nate's Saw and Mower. Third time hitting the end zone for the Gustine Reds makes it a 41-18 score. And the Reds kick off to Somerville will what will hopefully be the last time tonight. Barajas receives the kick, brings it to the 45-yard line, and the Somerville Bears hopefully just draw out the last minute, 39 seconds, taking knees or taking runs. And let's look at the Gustine Reds' season. Uh, tonight they fall to the Somerville Bears. Next week they will be in Merced at Stonebridge Christian, which is a future league opponent starting next year. Stonebridge Christian, we mentioned that a little earlier. It will be a very, very tough game. Uh, but after that, you got Rio Vista, and that does it for their preseason before they enter their first league game against Mariposa. Yeah, Mariposa is one of those teams. Is that here or is that up there? That Mariposa? is at Mariposa County. Tough yeah, game. So that's that's a tough place to travel to, and then a plus tough team to play. Mariposa that's always seems to have a, a few guys that are, that are real nine. just kind of throwback football nine. players, solid, Ball fundamental, area. and they like to throw the football around a little bit too. So. That's one of those, those D7 teams that's difficult to get matched up with. That was Tanner Klein getting a run for Somerville. And uh, Mariposa also plays on a grass field, so that's something in common with Gustine. It might give Gustine a little bit more of an edge than some other teams. Uh, after Mariposa, you got the rest of league, which is Denier, Denier, excuse me, Delhi, Waterford, Lee Grand, Ripon Christian, who is the runner-up state champ right behind the Houston Huskies, and then Oristemba. So a, a very tough schedule for them in league. Yeah, that's a tough tough finish, too. You get the two uh, leaders of the Southern League per usual. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. But you got, you know, those two teams back-to-back -back the last two weeks of the season. So you, you really got to get those, those league wins when you can in, in the middle section of that schedule if you're Gustine. Here's Nick Rogers. Not going to go anywhere. Third down in the final 30 seconds. And then when we move to the Somerville Bears side, we'll be with you all season long. Uh, Dos Palos makes its first time at Thorstead Field, in which two years ago, Dos Palos had an undefeated team in the regular season. And then um, the section kind of messed up in their placement, in which they then had to play a Division One school, in yeah. which Dos Palos, I believe, is D4, if I'm not mistaken, and Dos Palos uh, couldn't hold on to that game. So they lost in the first round of playoffs. Then when they played Somerville last year, Somerville ended up getting a victory there. But that is to come up next week as this game finishes with a score of 41 to 18. We'll be back in just a moment for our post-game show and our Black Oak Casino player of the game. Stay tuned. Ranch Casino is a proud sponsor of the Somerville Bears Quarterback Club and they support Somerville High student-athletes. 
By working together, Chicken Ranch Casino believes we can all help elevate each and every student athlete's game, both on the field and in the classroom. Lupo. It's a name synonymous with real estate in Tuolumne County and has been for more than 30 years. The latest member of the Lupo family to join the Tuolumne County real estate family is Leanne Lupo at Keller Williams Agency. Leanne is a Tuolumne County native and knows how special the place we call home is. A hard worker who truly cares about her clients. Leanne is a special talent. And Leanne is a Somerville High School graduate and huge Bear supporter, so give her a call and see what she can do to help you. If you see her around town, please thank her for helping to make tonight's live stream possible. Game one of the Somerville Bears season, a success for the Bears. 41-18 final score in Gustine. Next week it is Dos Palos, but to finish us up tonight, before we get to our Black Oak Casino Resort player of the game, Jeremy Hurtado, some stats please. Yeah, we look at the second half scoring. It was kind of an Austin hike show in the second half. In the third quarter, two touchdowns, both of them 30-plus yards in a span of two and a half minutes, kind of put the game away for Somerville as they had a 34-6 lead going into the fourth quarter. Gustine tried to make it a game in the fourth quarter. Levy, his second touchdown, this time six-yard run. PAT was no good, and it was 34-12. to And you're like, okay, maybe with, with about 13 minutes left, or actually it was about nine minutes left, that they, maybe they could make a little run. Uh, and then Somerville came back, and Colton Cash said, I'm going to take it 54 yards on the left sideline and, and make sure that this game is all but over. And again, Cash a second touchdown of the night. PAT was good, 40 to 12, or 41 to 12. Gustine was able to capitalize on the ex the punt turnover late in the fourth quarter. A minute 46 left to go. Palomino got his seven yard touchdown. PAT was no good, and that ended the scoring. 41, 18. Somerville comes away victorious. And Somerville has a tough opponent next week. Uh, they did make some mistakes that they definitely need to turn around and make sure that they not. Don't do it again, especially that uh, punt. That that entire situation was something else, and hopefully the coaches are able to zap that out of the player system. But uh, all in all, when it comes down to it, for our Black Oak Casino Resort player of the game, Austin Hike, two touchdowns, both for over 30 yards. You can't have football without Hike, and Austin Hike is our first Black Oak Casino Resort player of the game. Congratulations. But for us tonight, Somerville 41, Gustine 18 for our producer Dion I, our cameraman Avery and Taylor. He's Jeremy Hurtado. I'm the voice of choice, Levi Flores. Dos Palos at home next week.